Hey y'all, welcome to the channel, Sprinkle Sprinkle. It's been a while, so I'm glad that I had a few people waiting. Thank you so much for being here. Um, can y'all hear me good? Okay. All right. So we are going to be talking about water magic and more mermaid things, water magic. And, you know, we're getting into the warmer season. So people are going to be more outside, outdoors, going to lakes, streams, beach, trips, and all that kind of stuff. So I am here to show you a few ways to use water and your magic to create things that you like. First of all, whenever you make a tea, you have to add water. So water and herbs or teas are gonna be one form of your water magic. So when you're um, making your tea, you can put your intentions into your water, into your herbs, and just serve yourself some tea. And this is one form of water magic. And if you use a cute little mermaid cup, tea cup, or whatever makes you feel good and connect it to the energy and essence of water, that's what you should do. So I'm going to have some tea. And when we talk about water magic, you don't have to be a water sign to practice water magic. You don't have to live near a lot of water. You just have to have access to water or um, be able to get some type of liquid form. But I'm sure most people on earth have access to water. Okay. So, if you just need like a pick me up, this is, I'm going to give you all some tips. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You're currently studying alchemy. Thank you, Tara and Zoe. I appreciate that. So, um, one way to have water magic with you at all times is have a spray bottle. Um, that also you can get like one of these little misters. And the thing about this, you can put any type of water in here and mix it with any type of essential oil or other waters or anything like that. So you'll always have that um, water energy with you wherever you go. And you can also like clear, cleanse and clear a space with certain types of magical water. Now this water I got from a Catholic store and it's immaculate water and it's lavender and it's from the Lourdes Grotto water. And so this is where um, Immaculate uh, Mary, Mother Mary was seen um, in one of someone's, um, you know, experiences a long time ago. And so they sell this water as um, healing water, renewing water, da, da, da. So you can also make your own with different types of herbs. But here's one type of water. Of course, you all know holy water. So holy water in the Catholic Church is used to baptize, rebirth, renew, you know, into um, your, like, because everyone says, oh, you're born in sin, so this is to cleanse you, and to like, but basically, water is a feminine symbol, so it's kind of like re-immersing you back into the mother, giving you back to the mother, okay? Thank you, TYG, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, <clears throat> So when you're when you're a baby, you're in your mother's womb, which is in um, water, you know, a sac of amniotic fluid. And when you um, come out, the first thing they do is wash you, bathe you. So they're also giving you water. You can't really live a long time without water, right? You'll die. So water is very magical, very healing, and very much necessary. So if you want to make your own magical waters to do whatever you need them to do, you got to speak into your water. You can program your water with music, with sounds, with whatever. You can put herbs, crystals, and all these types of things. And preferably a, a glass or crystal jar is going to be the best thing to um, program your water in or store your water in. You can add crystals. Just make sure the crystals don't cause any adverse effects when if you are going to ingest the water. If you're not going to ingest the water, then if you're just going to use it for a spray, great. If you're going to ingest it, research your crystals first and make sure that they don't have any adverse effects if you're going to add them to water and then drink. Okay, so there's your 
caution um, warning there. So um, this is water and this is um, um, just an old liquor bottle that I decorated. You can decorate it however you want or you leave it clear. So <clears throat> after you program your water and maybe you can have it sitting on your altar, programming confidence in it, programming like beauty or whatever, abundance, whatever, whatever you're speaking into your water, right? And if, if you're going to make your own little water bottle and you want to make it fancy or extra, you can use this edible glitter. You know, a lot of people like their stuff to look fancy. So you can buy edible glitter online and add that to it and give it a little bit more of a magical touch. Um, I grow my own herbs and flowers, so I often harvest them and put them in these little mini mason jars. And you can add this to your water too, just to give it um, a little bit um, extra magic. Like mint is good for money, drawing in money. Roses is great for beauty or love. So add those things to your water mix. And if you're going to drink this water, make sure you're drinking it within that same week because you don't want it to go bad. Okay, Don't keep this forever. And I'm, I got a little funnel that I'm going to use. Don't keep this water forever. You got to drink it up. You can keep it in your fridge or wherever on your altar, wherever you need to keep it. Um, if you don't want a giant bottle, definitely, you know, you're not going to drink it for a week. Get you a smaller bottle and add something, um, you know, have a little smaller. This is like, but you, you get the idea. So a lot of you um, have problems with, you know, finance or issues in love or confidence or, you know, whatever, getting over a bad habit. So having a little magical jar of water to sip on every time, you know, you start focusing on the wrong thing to get your mind back right and to also give you that frequency and that energy that you put into that water while it was being programmed. It's just going to reset everything. So when you're feeling kind of low and kind of down or when you're thinking about abundance or love, whatever you program your water for, just go ahead and take a sip of it and, you know, concentrate, meditate on whatever it is that you are trying to focus on or just relax. Okay, so definitely have your magical waters. And um, if you want to make a spray magical water and you want it to last a little bit longer because you're not going to be ingesting it, definitely add a touch of like um, witch hazel or rubbing alcohol or vodka to preserve your waters. And when you add your herbs, flowers or whatever, it's going to be well preserved. You can even make rose water, any kind of floral waters. Put it in your cleaning solutions. Um, you can buy a lot of this pre-made, but it has a lot of fragrances in it, such as like rue water, rose water, orange water. You can buy those things online. But if you want to make your own and program your own water with your spells and intention, definitely use herbs um, and a little bit of alcohol or vodka or like a little bit of witch hazel to preserve so that you can spray and it doesn't go bad. Okay. Cause that's what I do. I have like a lot of my own sprays that I make and it really also makes the room smell good. If you have rosemary and things like that, it will also make the room smell really good when you spray. I like to spray on my pillows and bedding for like a fresh scent. Okay. Another form of water magic if you actually live near some water, you know, um, any, any type of uh, thing that's bothering you, any type of um, issue that you want to go away, you write it down on a piece of paper and you can put it in a jar or you can just fold it up and put it in whatever you want to put it into and put it in a stream or water, running water that's going away from you. And that's going to take the problem away from you. A lot of people also use this method to get rid of spell remnants or spell work. But, you know, you don't want to really pollute the environment if it's in something that's not biodegradable or anything like that. So if you're going to do that, make sure whatever it is, is not poisonous bio or like, you know, going to hurt any of the wildlife. Um, so 
definitely you send it away. Um, if you are not near water, flush it down the toilet, man. That's water going away from you. Okay. <laughs> so just, you know, if you live in a city and you can't get to any water, like running streams that go away from you, flush it down the toilet because literally the toilet is literally going away from you. The water is going away. So you can just do that. Mm. Um, another thing that I like to do is carry, um, she's, uh, I, I have crystals all the time. I like seashells. So I'm always getting shells. I have shell jewelry. This is made with real shells. Or I pick up some off the beach sometimes. They're not like these type of shells. They're just like the little shells that, you know, wash up that are flat. So I like to get some of those. And um, I make bath products. My, I make my own bath products. So I buy some like sea salt. Or I get, and I make my own like baths, like spiritual baths out of the, uh, of the waters. So, um, yeah, so you can get some water. You can get rainwater, fresh water from a lake. Um, sometimes that has like bacteria in it. So be careful if you're going to do bath. If I suggest if you're going to do a bath, get fresh water or like something that doesn't have bacteria in it. But you can add some sea salt. And all that kind of stuff. I have like a little jar that I painted and put really pretty like seashell glued seashells on top of it to give me that you know watery ocean essence. So when I take my baths, I feel like okay, I have all the seashells around me. I have seashells a lot in my bathroom. I have candles. I have you know um, different waters and tinctures that I could put in my bath. And um, you can literally create a spell in your bathtub like. With different herbs. If you don't want to clean up a bunch of herbs in your tub, just get you a little tea bag or a little sack of cheesecloth and put your herbs in there. And that way it's like a, it's going to steep versus get all over your tub because I hate cleaning all that extra stuff out. But it is pretty. So if you can do larger um, herbs or flowers that's easy to grab, I suggest that or just do the little sachet. Okay. Also, like your, your, beauty products, you know, um, anything like women who do makeup or, you know, they have like setting spray. I always mix a little bit of whatever type of water or floor water that I'm using into my setting spray, or I put some on right after. Like this is literally mixed with some of my own floral water from the garden and just some distilled water. And it, it smells really good when it, when you put it on. You can just smell it. Um, if you like more essential oils, you can get an oil that reminds you maybe of the ocean or you know fresh water, and put a little bit in your mister. I'm um, also um, if y'all are from my other channel, y'all already know I have a new fragrance out called Sirens um, Splash, and I don't have the link for it right now, but I'm definitely gonna put it in the permanent comments when this video is over so that y'all can get it or y'all just go to she Were seven and it's probably listed everywhere or on my instagram <laughs> um go to the community section on she Were seven and it should be listed there as well oh and also i forgot to tell y'all y'all can recharge this mister it doesn't take battery you just recharge it and i haven't recharged it since i bought it and i've had it for like two three months so it lasts a long time and i take this ever and it's cool too so if it's hot outside very cool later. And I just, I love having like a moist face because it keeps you young. Drinking water is also good for you because it does keep you young and hydrated, youthful looking. It keeps you youthful looking and hydrated. So definitely use water in everything you do. Um, I've, I made this a long time ago. So if you are one of those type of Ladies that like to decorate or craft and you like fancy bottles. This is an old hot sauce bottle that I turned into like this really pretty like bottle. You can hold all your water magic in here, your floral waters, or just use it for decoration. But I like to um, make my stuff look pretty. So this is an idea. I just had some gold paint. 
some old junk jewelry you can probably get at Goodwill or all your broken jewelry that you don't use anymore. You could just wrap it around a bottle like I did. I painted this gold with some just gold acrylic paint that costs a dollar. Um, I got this. I don't even know. Uh, I found it on something that I bought and I took it off and just glued it like from the thrift store. And then just a little piece of like tape or uh, washi tape or sticker you can use whatever you want to decorate these but literally it's so much fun to decorate stuff and use it in your magic because when you're creating and especially with water magic and you're going to be putting your intentions into the water you know beauty like if you want something for beauty or something like that you want the bottle to be beautiful so it can hold that intention and that frequency and that vibration okay if you want to, oh, sorry it's kind of bright you know, um, if if it's for something else like abundance, you might want to paint or put something on the bottle that has to do with abundance. So if you could draw a dollar sign or glue coins to your abundant water. You know what I'm saying? Or glue some real money uh, or a picture of some money, something like that. Um, I think coins would be cute. Uh, and that's definitely um, something that, also, you can work into your decor. Like if you don't like people knowing your business and that you're practicing magic, you know, no one's going to really know what this is if it's sitting next to something that it matches. They're just going to think it's a decorative bottle, you know. So if you're not able to like display all your stuff out in the open, just use little tricks like that and things like that. Also, like you can buy these really ornate and beautiful perfume bottles to keep your waters in um also as a way to like disguise them for what they really are um or you can make uh, perfumes and um, perfumed waters i like making perfumed waters and if you mix a little bit of oil in your perfumed waters um, you could put it in your hair and things like that too like when you wash it um, but definitely you can use these little cute bottles for your water magic. Definitely. And no one's going to know what they are. It's going to think it's perfume. Okay. <laughs> now they sell these little holy water uh, vessels um, online or you can get them, you know, wherever. But you can also like... If you have like a lot of people that carry negative energy and you want to make your own version of holy water or you just want to use holy water, definitely carry some in your purse. And when they when they come around or, like you know, when they leave, because you can't really if you don't do sage or you don't want to spray, you know, every time someone leaves your office or leaves your car or whatever, you just kind of like sprinkle, sprinkle, you know, get, get that energy out. And also it's a protective form as well as someone like negative is speaking a lot of negativity. You can use holy water to protect yourself or any of the waters that you make on your own for protection. You can use that and you can also um, protect other people with it. Okay. Thank you. Fashion class, sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate it. So you can use it for protection as well. So a lot of people like to use protection water when they drive or when they go somewhere or when they travel, um, I get you a little travel size, definitely. Okay. Um, and if you're going to be working with water, collect rainwater, collect rainwater. Um, you can use it to water your plants. Um, you can use it to, um, create, you know, your own little protection water or water to help you have, you know, more insight or things like that. Sorry. So you're going to have like a lot of um, ways to use this water. And I have some suggestions for books in that link in the description. And also I'm going to link it again here. Um, I'm just going to put water, water magic items, but it's a whole list of the spiritual items that I suggest and they're on Amazon. So if y'all want like a quick way to get some of these items or magical, you know, watery items, you can definitely click on that Amazon link. But um, I also like to like this weekend I'm going 
to the beach. I got an Airbnb, so we're going to the beach. I don't really like going to the beach and doing hotels because like you got to walk in with all your, unless it's a resort. But I prefer to get an Airbnb like near the beach and definitely just do that. So like I got my little cute makeup bag, but I'm going to be doing like beachy makeup, beachy themes, mermaid type outfits. Like when I go to the beach and travel, like make sure you're you know, with the vibe and the essence of, you know, the type of magic you're working or the type of, you know, places you're going. So since we're going to the beach, we're going to be getting our mermaid outfits together, getting our pretty glittery makeup. It's good to be in the same frequency and vibration with what you're trying to accomplish and work with, because it puts you more in the frequency of being able to, you know, work with water, work with, you know, different types of magic or uh, learn about different types of water energies and spirits and stuff like that. Like if some of you guys work with Emoja, um, uh, or any type of water spirits, mermaid spirits, um, energy siren or whatever you like to work with, make sure you're like a vessel and playing the part as well, because it's going to help the magic work a lot better and also the energy and all that kind of stuff is going to be you know it's going to feel more natural to you even if you're not a water sign um it doesn't matter because you're everyone is like 70 percent or more of water and so you're naturally able to use water magic moon magic and water magic go hand in hand because the moon controls the tides of the ocean the ebb and flow and things like that so you're going to want to also if you're work a lot you know if you're working a lot with water you can get like moon water and work with the moon phases and things like that but i just prefer to work with water and whatever phase the moon happens to be in i'll see if there's something that i can do with that if not you know i'm not really too much worried about it but definitely there are you know advantages to using moon phases so you can definitely um work with that too but water yeah mommy water mommy wata oshun there's probably books. Um, I, I did recommend a few books on Imaye, but there's a lot of books on water goddesses, water deities, water spirits that you guys can work with. Um, if I put on my gloss, you guys can work with. I even, you know what? You know what I like to do? I'm going to tell you all a little trick that I like to do. Whenever I'm studying certain things like different goddesses, different um, spirits, different magics. I like to get my own specific journal to particularly and specifically what I'm studying. So I bought this really pretty one for my um, water magic mermaid siren, you know, water deities, water goddess information and research. So I like to have something special because it makes me want to read and study more. And then when I'm done, I have all my notes. I like to use like, I like to decorate it and make it look all extra, you know, stickers, um, scrapbook stuff, you know, just little seashells and stuff. So I'm going to really have fun, you know, studying and learning and wanting to delve more into, even though I know a lot about this stuff already, because I've been reading since I was a little child. But when I embark upon, um, more books like when I read more books I like to take notes from my books I like to get information I like the lore on certain things and I like to put it all together and so when I get older or when my kids you know want to look at some of these things it's nicely written in my handwriting um decorated how I like to decorate um me pulling out the important things that I feel were important in the books instead of you know all that kind of stuff and I do like to reference which book I got the information from so people don't think I'm just like writing some random stuff I'll put from the book and then I'll put the title and so um yeah I like having specific books and journals for specific studies or note taking I like to call it I have so many notebooks that are filled with just notes that I've taken from reading and just doing a lot of research and so Oh, thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you. What, what to do 
feel lost alone and keep having visions, getting a little stressed about the future. So happy you're back. Okay. The future hasn't happened in the future. Thank you for the donation. The future is what you make it, ma'am. So if you're worried about the future, start acting today in the present. The thing is, the future is something that stresses a lot of people out because it hasn't happened yet. And you're worried about problems that do not exist. So never worry about problems that do not exist. Just do whatever you can today to prevent any problems. Do whatever you can today to make life good today and tomorrow. Because the best thing you can do is that you can't change the past and you cannot affect the future except by using the presence the present. Okay. Um, you can get like, okay. So if you get some ink, this is like a liquid, right? You can program your ink. This is what I want to happen. You know, A, B, C, and D get you a little dipping pen. They sell these cute glass pens too. If you don't like fountain pens, you can just get one of the little glass pens or whatnot. Or you can get a fountain pen and program the little ink cartridge, whatever. Okay. Do you need to program the liquid? And then you need a boop. Then you need to write what you want your future to be. You need to program the ink and then write what your future or what you want your future to be. Uh, you can call this manifestation. You can call this, you know, intention, you know, uh, scripting or whatever you want to call it. But you need to take charge of your own life. That's what you're afraid of because you're afraid someone else is in control. You're afraid the, the things may not go how you want them to go. So take control, man. Take control. Sparkle, sparkle. Even if you're a, a religious person, in, in the beginning of the Bible says, you know, there was the word mm -hmm, and it programmed. This is like the ohm or whatever first sound. Program that water, man. Program that ink. And write your own future or write how you want it to go. And subconsciously, what you're doing is programming your mind to follow that script or some part of it or to take action in some sort of way that is going to get you those results. So take control of your life. Don't be afraid of it. Take control of it. Okay. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle. A lot of people ask me where I got Sprinkle Sprinkle from. It's from my other channel. I have no, like, there's a video where I first started saying, because I'm sprinkling glitter everywhere. But, you know, if you think about this, it's like, you know, I'm a water sign. Oh, shoot. I just, I just literally spilled a bunch of glitter. <laughs> this is going to be fun to clean up. <laughs> okay, let me, let me concentrate and close this before I spill anymore. Okay, so as I'm talking about sprinkle, sprinkle, so there are no such thing as coincidence, right? This is how you know that your words are also very powerful. So what you speak is what you create and um, your voice, it's, you know, it's lubricated with water. And when you speak and it vibrates and it creates a frequency and it creates just like this mist out into the, into the world. So this mist, if you hold it in front of something, you can see it, it's manifested, right? So that's how our words are. That's how our words are. So think of this as like you speaking. So speak positive about yourself because if you're speaking negative about yourself, what are you putting out there? People are breathing this in. It's going in people's eyes. It's you know, it's going to the atmosphere. You know, what are you putting out there? Put put good things out there. And I, I tell like young girls and young people all the time, don't ever talk negative about yourself. Don't seriously never talk negative about yourself. Always talk positive about yourself and what you want yourself to to be, not what you don't want, because this is what you're putting out. Okay. Literally. And <clears throat> it goes into everything and it happens because it's programmed. Because when you speak, you're programming the little spit particles and the water that's in the back of your throat. It's coming out through your mouth. You're programming that. And that's why I say when y'all speak, that is that's literally water magic. 
and y'all are putting that out there into the into to be birthed, you know. So make sure you only speak positive and not fearful and positive about yourself. Because literally, like, this is what you're doing into the world. You're putting, this is what you're putting out. And it's manifest, you see? It's not just words. So water is the easiest thing to program because it holds frequency. Okay. So speak like your spell, like you're doing spells, and especially when you're speaking with intention. When you're speaking with intention, you're literally speaking magic or your future or what you want or you're manifesting right there. So be careful. Like a lot of people are programmed and taught by other people to talk down about themselves, to talk down about other people, to talk you know, to, to doubt themselves and to have low self-esteem and, and to fear a lot of things. And that's why you're, a lot of people's lives reflect that because that's what they speak and create. If you change the way you speak and create, because you understand water magic, then you have no worries because what you said, you know, the saying, I said what I said, use that, use it to your advantage. Okay. Because a lot, it's going to help you a lot. That one particular, you know, thing about speaking is going to help so many people. I promise you. Okay. I have another. Oh, my tea. Sorry, y'all. I have another little little tip for you guys, uh, ladies who are anybody who wears earrings. I guess anybody who wears earrings. Okay. When I think of earring, I think of like ring as far as frequency or ring as far as what's going to be created okay in a cycle so if you are the type of person that believes that um all things have frequency and energy you know you know crystals diamonds different types of energies are in our jewelry right here's some of my jewelry so i have like crystal jewelry i have little turtles i have starfish i have like pearls seashells or whatever whatever right so if you program your earrings, you can also program your earrings by speaking because crystal also holds diamonds, gemstones, crystals, and all that kind of stuff. The whole frequency too, right? So um, because crystals are literally not even a solid or a liquid, it's like an in-between. Thank you, Goddess Deshay, Sprinkle Sprinkle. How do you use different journals for different books? Um, I just write my notes in them and make them pretty or make them interesting so that I'll like to, you know, pass them on or just read them. I just take notes, literally, things that I find important or I add my own description of what I think something is or I add my own thoughts after the notes and things like that to more to personalize it more. So it's just whatever you make it for your own personal use or if you're doing journals to pass on to your kids, then maybe write in their, you know, form of understanding. So either way. So if you believe in programming crystals and stuff, we can program your jewelry. So you know how like they say, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Okay, so you can program your earrings. Like, sorry, y'all. Okay, so you just speak into them, or like you can use this mister. Pro the water's already programmed. Okay, there you go. And put it on. So I don't want to hear no mess today. I don't want to hear no negativity today. This is my positivity water or my, you know, money attraction. I only want to hear about things that's bringing me money, whatever, whatever. Bam. Okay. Put them in here. If you don't have one of those misters, spray. All right. <laughs> whatever. Um, if you don't like a spray bottle, just take a little dab. There you go. Okay. Mm. Program. Or just speak on it because it's the same thing as this. Okay. Um, that's how you do it. And I promise you, you do that often and you're going to start to see more results and it's going to work. I'm like, no one's talking negative to me today. Oh my gosh. I'm only hearing money making ideas. Yes. You know, it's, it's because you programmed 
your frequency and the frequency around you and the atmosphere around you to only attract that. You see how it works? And then, especially if you're drinking it, you're programming the inside of your body to only speak that and also vibrate that. So now you're vibrating abundance and all this kind of stuff, you know, money making ideas on a on a larger scale. And so you're unattracted on a larger scale. OK. So that's why you always see me drink water. Y'all always see me spraying some. You know, I love this thing, y'all. <laughs> My kids are so sick of me because I walk around with this. I'm like, y'all want some? <laughs> it smells so good because I have like a rosy um, smell in there that I got from the, you know, the petals in my own garden. So I'm kind of proud of that too. But at the same time, if you don't have that, just use a little bit of essential oil or rose water or whatever. Oh, thank you, Goddess Wild Raider. I appreciate you. Yeah, you can use it for travel. Like get you a travel size bottle okay i think this is travel size and also you can just dump the water out and put it new water in when you get wherever you're going okay <clears throat> thank you i appreciate it i'm trying to put this over there also like before you go to sleep at night you should drink water a glass of water this is why the, they're you know they always have like these little carafes for water next to your bed and then this is a little cup i love these things I got this for one of my gifts, I think, for Christmas. Yeah. So have one by your bed. Take some water before you go to sleep because this this hydrates you and it also makes you in a uh, higher frequency. Okay. So your dreams are going to be better and just going to be more comfortable overall. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, I have a lot of good books that I recommend for the water energy and water magic and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm going to put the link. It's an Amazon link and it just has a bunch of spiritual things and books and mermaid stuff, water stuff. Just like if you scroll, the, it's like a lot of stuff from most of the videos that I've talked about items and books and stuff that I recommend. But if you click on it now, you're going to be more into what I'm speaking on on this video. But if you scroll, you'll probably see all sort of stuff. It's like items I suggest, spiritual items I suggest, you know, from Amazon. So right now I'm going to have a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about that y'all can look into and, and books, lots of books and things like that. So definitely. I ordered a few of the books that I have on here. They're supposed to be arriving today because I want to take them with me so that I can, you know, read and things like that while I'm at the beach or while I'm on vacation. So. I'm also bringing my journal. I think it's the perfect time to like get into that frequency. If you're going on vacation, even if you're just going to the pool, you know, get you a little mermaid book or water magic book, get you a little journal, get you a little spray because this is cool when it's hot outside. And just, you know, get into it. You know, you said you like my Amazon list. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, also, I got like this cute little, like, watery looking cosmetic bag and a little seashell compact mirror so i can do it Ooh, my eye makeup looks good today okay i did a little bit of extra some glitter get me in the mermaid energy so this is kind of like plush plushy they have all different colors. Um, I actually bought a set of these and it came with like three different colors. So I gave some to my daughter. Each of my daughters got a little bag with a mirror in it for our trip. Oh, thank you, Navi. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, uh, also, I'm going to be like taking my little purse. It's, it looks like shell. <laughs> it looks like seashell or you can get one that actually looks like a shell. <laughs> This is a, just a little cheap one that I got. It comes with like a little chain or you can hold it like a clutch. But um, since I'm going to the beach this weekend, I have like all my little like, seashell jewelry in here, my seashell earrings that I bought. I got some like um, pearls. I have, oh my gosh, that's the strap. Oh, this is my favorite. Uh oh, Steph, Steph, Shira, I love this channel. It's like a little cherry on the top of Sunday. Thank you, girl. I appreciate you, Steph, Steph. 
some little, uh, look at this, a seashell bracelet. I have the necklace to match this. And it jingles too. This is so pretty, right? And the necklace is like, a, not a choker, but it's like, it's bigger than this, but it has more shells on it. And it matches. Get your siren or mermaid look together. Um, if you want, uh, go into the beach, have fun. <laughs> I bought one also that I have to give to my daughter because it's too small for me. It's more for like a child size or a small, small wrist. This one is pretty too. And you can order all this stuff on Amazon or like wherever, like little store you shop at online. They have like a lot of stuff. Just type in, you know, uh, seashell jewelry or something like that. I don't know. But you'll find some cute stuff or you can make your own. I know a lot of people are into jewelry making and they make their own. Um, okay, so shells, cowrie shells, any type of shell. These represent abundance. Oh, excuse me. dropping. Oh. Um, I have shells and crystals everywhere, y'all. So anywhere I'm reaching, I'm going to grab something like this. So, um... <laughs> Also, um, aquamarine stones is a very like watery um, stone. It's actually my birthstone. And you can buy tumbled or raw aquamarine um, on my, actually I sell it on my Dark Realm online occult shop, which is the last um, link in my description bar. And I bought a bunch of it and a bunch of cowrie shells and I have it in a little um, plate with rosebuds. Um, aquamarine and then cowrie shells and I keep it there um, and it brings in abundance and beauty and all that kind of stuff because of the rose and then it right you know um, aquamarine it's like very much um, positive energy and then of course um, I sprinkled a little bit of mint in there to also have the abundance so I, it looks like potpourri it looks like fancy potpourri and so with like seashells in it it just looks like a little mix of fancy potpourri with like, or like, um, you know how like the shiny marble rocks or whatever. It just looks like some type of table decor. So if you don't want um, people knowing your business, just make it look like it's part of the decor. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, tumble crystals are just smooth crystals to make it look more smooth instead of rough. So... One, like if you get a raw crystal, it looks like a rock, like a literal rock with rough edges and it's not smooth and like pretty, right? If you get something, if you get it tumbled, it's all smooth, okay? And it looks shiny and smooth. So that's the difference. Um, do y'all have any questions? Speak on the eclipse. Why is the lock locked down and three rockets being shot in the sun? It's you know what the thing is that's that's magic. People are performing magic to change the world. And what I've learned is if you decode everyone's spells, if you try to decode everyone's magic and stuff like that, you know you're going to be decoding a lot. Like I used to, I used to decode everybody's magic, everybody's frequency, everybody's all those kinds of. The, the people that are behind those things, they're performing magic on a larger scale because they have more money. See? <laughs> oh, DJ Sprinkle Sprinkle. Best spells to stop cheating. Okay, to stop yourself from cheating or to stop other people from cheating? <laughs> well, in the old days, they say bare day draws in the backyard. <laughs> The old school magic bears bury their underwear in the backyard. Anyway, or bind them. Um, look at my spells playlist and look for binding spells. I have two of them. One is a freezer spell and one is a binding spell. But the, I think the freezer spell works better with water because you're freezing their actions. You know, but if you're, if you forget or if it thaws out or if you don't redo it or whatever, whatever, or if you just, 
depending on the wording that you're using, like this is frozen and it's going to stay like this forever, even after this melts, because the act of freeze, freezing something is definitely, you know, putting a bind on something. So if you're going to do a freezer spell and like write on a piece of paper what you want to happen, like your intention, like let this fool stop cheating or whatnot, then you freeze it and like their cheating is frozen. They're bind. And then you can do another one to bind them to their responsibilities, to whatever you need to bind them to. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely something that you can do with water and a freezer and a freezer bag. Do I think, oh, I'm not really gonna be talking about celebrities because like I said, a lot of people's um, spells, magic and business are their own. And if you don't really understand magic and spells and um, uh, symbolism, you're not really gonna get what's happening or what's going on. But you can kind of see little bits and pieces of how people are um, dealing with their lives, you know. So what I will say is that a lot of a lot of people do things because they think they're powerful, right? And eventually when someone becomes not afraid of your power a lot of times those things are no longer you know helpful to you so that's all i'm going to say when other people are not as intimidated by another person and they don't care because they said what they said then the the other person's power becomes less and less. See, most people don't speak out of fear. Most people react from fear or, you know, losing something. But when you have no fear and no one can take anything from you and you speak your truth, nothing can stop it. Because if you're if you're a if you know what water represents, it re represents also f the divine feminine and mother. All right? It's a water. So if you are under and taken care of and protected by a mother who will do anything to protect their young, you have no fear. Okay? And so you can say what you want. Oh, DJ Sprinkle Sprinkle, does a free freezer binding make them cold towards you? No. Why would it make them cold? It, what is your intention? What are your thoughts? Okay. Y'all have to think about this. Your intention and your thoughts and your words, not the actual action. You are the creator. You are what creates. So if your intention is to freeze their uh, activities, then that's what you write and that's what you say. If your intention is to bind them like ice binds this paper that you're freezing into it, that is your intention. Anything else. It's not your intention. So it's not going to be what it is. So it's your own intention that programs and creates and what you speak into that water when you freeze it, not anything else. Because, you know, you ever heard of freezer burn? <laughs> so it doesn't matter. You have to be like, you have to put your intention. It's not about, you're letting everything else rule you when you're supposed to be ruling. You get it? Oh, Andromeda, thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Tides and offerings, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay, Cass, you want him obsessed, but I don't want him. Honestly, this is, okay, let me tell y'all ladies something. These are a waste of time because you could be just doing money spells for yourself or spells to bring in men with more money. Not, like, honestly, if you just want to mess with people and stuff like that, you're natural, do beauty spells. Do and everybody will be obsessed, man. Do beauty spells, do spells, attraction spells, do spells for yourself. That way it's not just one, but there's some. And you can have your pick, ma'am. So do it on a larger scale. No, just focus on one person. Because that person, if they ain't got no money, if they ain't spending no money, what who cares? Do it on a broad scale and you will attract him, them, and the other ones. Okay. <laughs> Think big. Um, you can't find the miss girl. Let me help you. It is on. Uh, look, go to this link. Click on this link. 
and scroll them. You're going to see it. There's two of them on the picture. All right. <laughs> or just type in face mister. I don't know. But you should be able to find it on that link. Babe. <laughs> well, I think about water births. Interesting. And it probably takes a lot of pressure off of the, the mom, too. I, I, I think it's interesting if it's helpful. Definitely. Um, <laughs> stop begging for men. I was taking notes, actual knowledge. Okay. Yeah, as women, we are, um, you know, we get attention regardless. So just do an overall spell, overall attraction, overall abundance, overall, um, you know, attraction and enticing whatever whatever to men okay? just do that for all men <laughs> and that way you have your choice and your pick uh oh dj sprinkles what spell would you use to make him even more generous to you only i don't like okay so the thing is i don't want to do all that extra stuff i just want like, if you bind him to you only if you bind him to you bind him first and then do the generous spell okay you gotta bind them to you and if you bind someone to you, they're bound to you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to bind them first, ma'am. It's just, okay, so for example, like when y'all get married, when people get married, you're literally binding yourself to the other person. That's why in pagan marriages or in some marriages, they do the ribbon and they bind your hands together because like you become one. So you become bound to one another. So it's almost taking it to the to the step of like spiritually being married. So when you bind someone, you're literally binding yourself to them. And honestly, when I speak about being bound to someone, your frequencies also become binded. So be careful with that. Uh oh, DJ Sprinkle Sprinkle, thank you, girl. Nuss Raw Sprinkle Sprinkle menstruation tips for abundance. Okay. Um, um well this is more for like the water magic, but I guess like blood is water. The remnants of your uterus that comes out um, that has stem cells in it that actually bring life to the planet. If you want to get scientific with it, the blood, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Literally, menstruation is the blood of Jesus because if you look at a uterus, it looks like someone hanging on a cross, on a crucifix. And then when they stabbed, like if you know the story of Jesus, because you know it's close to Easter. When they stabbed him in the side and he bled out, you know, it's just the period. So you're, you're just being, you know, using the blood of Jesus. The son that was sacrificed, the egg that was never fertilized. And if you think about it, like if the woman is God or goddess, you know, if you don't get pregnant, and you have your period, you sacrificed your only egg and your only son. And, you know, an egg looks like a son. So literally, Ostara Easter is the celebration of fertility and the goddess, not of a man. But they always want you to make it about a man. But literally, if you think about what Easter or Ostara or, you know, really is, it's the celebration of fertility and your period. Uh, and um, it's sad when, like, if you don't, if you're, if you're trying to have a baby, and you don't get pregnant, you know, it's like, oh, no, my egg is being sacrificed and the blood of Jesus has come now. And, you know, now we can be reborn again. And the next month you have another egg to possibly be fertilized. Okay. So um, you get cramps while you're on your period. That's the suffering. Uh, when you are you know, during that time of the month, you're more aware, you're more emotional, you have more insight. Um, you know, there's healing in that time, especially, and also there's healing in the stem cells and in the water and in the blood. Okay. How do you use magic to attract clients for a new business? Business, um, abundant spell, better business, better business spell. So you can write a petition. And um, on a piece of paper, say, 
better business. Um, I, I want to attract more clients with that's going to spend money and repeatedly like don't just do it for one. Just do it like forever. That way you never have to keep doing it. So I, I always use my words. I'm like um, a steady incline, a steady incline or a steady increase in business. Um, and more avenues to create streams of income that increase over time and bring much wealth. So words, stuff like that. And then write it down. Now, if you're going to use water magic, um, you can speak it into like a bottle of water, you know, bring, you know, more business that are what I just said, program your water and drink it every day. Take a sip of it when you wake up in the morning or um, maybe for like a week. And then, or and you can also light a candle if you're like into candles and put the petition under the candle and let it burn. But at the same time, you want to just program yourself and that water and um, make sure you're taking a drink of it every day because it's subconsciously programming your mind to only take actions towards better business. Okay, you see my necromancy video. How do you speak to someone who's past like they are? What are these steps? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, okay, let me get into that because uh, thank you, Shanna. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And thank you for a spiritual coaching, guys. Thank you, Anonymous. Okay, so let's talk about that. When someone dies, when someone passes away, as a, as a former mortician, um, legally, the law makes you wait three days, depending on, I guess, your religion, but Legally, you have to wait three days before you can be cremated or buried, okay? Because your energy and your essence is leaving your body within those three days, okay? Um, when you take your last breath, you go like, ugh. And so your last, I, I like to call it the plasma or whatever, your spirit, energy, whatever, whatever you want to call it, leaves your body, right? It goes out into the atmosphere. And the rest of your essence and your energy are in your organs, um, and in your blood and in all that stuff. Once all these organs start to decay, it, they release gases. There are chemical changes within the body and all these gases are being released. And so by day three, you know, it's, it's, it's figured that most of your vital gases that hold your energy, and your, you know, your frequency have been released. And then you can embalm, bury, you know, uh, I mean, you can bury or, you know, embalm. Well, actually, they embalm you right away unless you request them not to. So depending on all of that. So basically, you got three days before all this leaves you. Okay. Um, so after the third day, a lot of people will, you know, start to try to communicate with their loved one by um, setting out objects or things that they favor or that they like, and especially putting out water. Okay. You have to have them something to drink because water holds the frequency, okay? And this is how they left. Last breath. And this is how you'll communicate with them, okay? That's why I'll say pour them a drink. A lot of people, if their favorite drink was alcohol, also have some alcohol or some water there too, okay? Have they have a drink, lady, and have, have some water because this is what they need to manifest, Okay, so you pour them water, you make sure you have whatever favorite things that they like so that they're attracted to it. Okay, so um, just like if you were to, okay, here's some science for y'all. I'm going to get to your question in a second, but let's say this. I don't believe in karma because I'm not Buddhist, but or Hindu, whatever. So let's say you take this and I'm going to spray this. This is a cough drop. Or a piece of candy if you want to see this. If I spray this for like a long, long time, it's going to wear this out, right? No matter what. This doesn't look like much. But if I spray this for a long time, this is going to melt. Now, putting out someone's favorite candy or treats or food is the equivalent to them being able to absorb that energy from it. Okay? So, I need that. <laughs> Okay, Natasha, will you get karma for overusing spell works? I wish I knew. Only in your own mind, if you program your mind to believe in karma. So, for example, I don't care about any of that other stuff. It's your intention and what you need done and what you want done. If you keep doing spells on people because you can't get them, you know, to do what you want them to do, or if you can't 
You can't fix the spell to mean and mean it one time. And so you only have to do it one time because you're not using your words correctly. Then you have to worry about yourself worrying about uh, some type of karma because you believe in that. If you don't believe in it and you use your words correctly the first time, you don't have to keep repeating unless you just like the actual craft of spell work and maybe change the words around a little bit to tweak it. But honestly, you shouldn't have to do your spell work over and over if you use the words right the first time. Thank you, Natasha. That's a good question. All right. So how to transmute jealous and envious energy, PGA? By taking it as a compliment. I mean, think about this. No one's jealous or envious of someone who's not doing anything good with their lives. So flip it around and take it as a compliment. Like, I'd be jealous of me, too, if I weren't me and I was them. <laughs> so take it as a compliment. Don't worry about it because it's literally a compliment in reverse. Okay? I mean, are you jealous and envious of someone who's doing nothing with their life and who look like who did it and why? No, right? It's a compliment. Take it. I only hear compliments. <laughs> Okay, Asha, sprinkle, sprinkle. She says, um, okay. how do you t view tests from the universe, right? When I decide to better myself, a huge challenge to match it. I don't believe in, I'm holding resistance. I don't believe in tests. I'm not in school. Become a teacher and you won't be tested. So I don't believe in tests. I believe in options because you all have a choice, okay? So for example, if someone says, you have to pass this test, guess what? I'm, I don't even have to take the test. I, that's my choice. Get it? Just continue to do what you do. Nothing is a test. If you see it as an obstacle or a test or something that you have to do to complete, da -da -da -da, then that's how you're seeing it. I'm seeing it as, okay, I'm still going to do what I'm doing anyway. That's nice, but I'm still going to continue. Get it? I don't take choices. I create options. Thank uh, God. It's why thank you. So for example, if someone said, okay, you have to choose right now between this and this, and this is a test. What are you going to choose? Neither or both is my answer. So for example, you know how they do like those celebrity pictures and they put like all these great celebrities or singers and they got one got to go. Who is it? Look, you don't have to answer that question. You can just scroll right by. Or someone gives you a choice. Either you're going to go here or you're going to go there. They're taking away all the other options. So it's not a test. It's a test of your own mind to see if you're going to let somebody tell you what to do. That's all it is, ma'am. Also, if there's a test to see if you're going to do the right or wrong thing. Um, if you If you weren't being tested, what would you do naturally? Or what's going to bring you the best results for those who are involved in your life um, and make them happy? That's the choice you make. You don't you don't make a choice because someone gives you options. You create they're taking away every other option except these two. So you don't let people tell you what to do. You do what you want. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I do what I want. You don't, you don't tell me what to do. You're not going to give me only two options when there's infinite options. That's how. You don't take tests, ma'am. You you pass every test by not taking any test. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all. Y'all like that little piece? I just spoke. I, I appreciate that. You know, I don't take no tests. I got all the options before you even came up to me. So... <clears throat> infinite options, ma'am. If you live in an infinite and vast universe, and this is you, literally, how, look, you can go anywhere. You can do whatever you want, okay? You are multidimensional. You don't have to choose what they tell you to choose. Uh oh, kitty, sprinkle, sprinkle, what to do about dating spiritual men? <laughs> I'm in the process of leaving one now and want to break all ties and leave no bad. Girl, I would never date a spiritual man. I'm like, you know what? I like you to just be like clueless. Because, okay, first of all, 
no, no shade to any men who are spiritual, but spiritual people tend to argue more because everyone's spiritual journey is personal and you're not going to see the world the same way as the next person. It is your world. It is literally your frequency. It is literally your illusion. And if you stop agreeing on one thing, you may have agreed on everything up until one point. And then you say, oh, no, I can't deal with you because you don't believe in this one thing. You know what? I'm not in your world. I'm in my world. And I believe what I want, when I want, how I want. And then I cannot believe it the next day. So when you are dealing with spiritual people, you need to let them know right away that there is no right or wrong for an individual. That's your right, but it ain't my right. That's your belief, but it's not my belief. We might have, you know, they have the little Venn diagram where you had the little circles. We might believe in what's in this little circle in the middle, but on the outside, we're free to believe how we choose. Spirituality is a personal journey. OK, so you don't have to always agree with what someone else is doing because it's not your journey. OK, and that needs to be spoken in the beginning of the relationship. If you are going to enter into a relationship with any spiritual man, you need to tell them straight up. I'm not going to believe what you're going to believe all the time. And it doesn't make it wrong or right. It just says, you know, my spirituality is my own personal journey and it is what it is. Just like people's diets. If someone is vegan and someone eats meat, y'all aren't going to argue about which is better. Y'all just going to say, well, then don't eat it. Okay? That's it. Nothing to argue about. But, oh, pretty pancakes, sprinkle, sprinkle. I used to swim in muddy pond when I was young, and there were some snakes, and you couldn't see what was in there, but it was fun. Good for you, pretty pancakes. A lot of people don't need that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you live in the South, especially. There was alligators where I lived. We'll swim with alligators, snakes, fish. We was all in there together. Coexisting. But see, like, like and also like when you go to the ocean, you got to worry about animals. When you go to the lake, you got to worry about animals and stuff like that. <laughs> but, you know, if you if your frequency is good, you should be all right, you know. Don't get in the water at that time of the month, though. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Oh, Anna, a guy pays your bills and gives you about three years he's married, but I promised him to marry him that he gives me more money, and he does. We never slept. Okay, you never slept together. You don't want to marry him. You just want more of his money. How do I continue? Bind him to you financially. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So get you a Ziploc bag. Bind him to you financially to pay your bills, to give you money for your love. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Thank you. I don't understand people who feel they have spells for everything. I'd be sad. Like, ma'am, sir, use your inner power. Use your brain. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Jay Ellington. So this programs you. So whatever you're doing, whatever your hands are doing materially is also programming your support subconscious mind. So for example, if you do this freezer spell to financially, you know, buy someone to you, you're going to automatically, your subliminal subconscious mind is going to think of ways to get him to give you more money. And so is you're programming yourself to how to protect yourself from evil eye or jealous energy from people, someone in your life. But honestly, you can make a water for that. Just program it, protect me, protection water, okay? You can make it into a spray bottle, protection water. Just look up, look it up online, whatever. It's holy water, whatever. So you can use any type of protection, but if your mind is also very powerful. So if you feel like people who are, like, if you feel like if there's a lot of jealous energy and people around, it's like, you know, it's a compliment, literally. If you take it as a compliment and something positive, uh, sometimes people do mean things and say mean things and it might hurt your feelings because they're jealous. But in your mind, in the back of your, in your subconscious mind, you already know it's a compliment because they're not jealous of that person. They're not jealous of that person. That must mean you're doing something great for them to be jealous of. 
And it's not you that they're jealous of. It's that you make them feel like they have to do more and that they're lacking in something. So really, they're just insecure within themselves. So when you break it down like that and you're like, you know what? They're just jealous because they can't live up to my greatness. So, you know, I, you can either feel sorry for them or take it as a compliment. But there's nothing you really need to do because as long as you're better than them, they're going to be jealous than you. What, what are you going to do? Help them get better or stoop down back to their level? Which one is? Because either way, it's not going to work unless you just stop caring. Just stop caring. Maybe do a spell to not care what people think so much and keep it moving. Or learn how to talk to them. Like, you know what? You sound a little jealous, you know? You get on my level. Because I'm not stooping back down to you. You want some tips and hints and clues? I got some books you can read. I got some advice I can give you. But that's about it. I can't do nothing about your jealousy. Only you can change how you feel about yourself compared to me. That's how you need to think. You say you're trying to get a good job at any spell? Yeah. Actually, I'm just doing freak abundancy spells. I'm not trying to do no job. I'm trying to get some money. So either way, like if you keep it all about the money, financial, then, you know, a job will come. People will come to give you money. You might find some money, you know, so keep it open, not just to no job. OK, keep it open. Stop being too specific, because if you're super specific, you're going to attract a job. Right. What if that job doesn't pay well? Or what if you lose that job two days later or a week later? You got your, you got what you wanted, but did you get the money? So use money instead of just a job, because however money gets to you the fastest, however many ways you have for money to get to you, that's how it's going to get to you. So fill out them applications if that's what you want. Um, you know, do other things at the same time to attract more money. So you have several streams and several ways for money to come to you. OK, book suggestions for mental alchemy. Honestly, I feel like my book. I don't even know where it's at. It's linked in the description bar, Manifesting with Dark Energy. And dark energy is just the energy in the womb or in your when you close your eyes and all you have left is your imagination to create. It's in the description bar. Uh, my book. <laughs> all right. Uh-oh, Celine, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, good evening. Today, my college professor tried to embarrass me and asked if I ever studied because of how feminine I look and I dress and everyone laughed. Why is this? Because, like, they figure, like, if you're pretty and super feminine, it means you're dumb. But that's the best disguise, ma'am. You, you can play that up to get more. So, for example, you can be like, <laughs> I studied a little bit and then ace the test and score it higher than all of them. Okay. Duh. Use their, use, you know, how they think most women are dumb to your advantage. That's how, that's how you get money and people to do stuff for you. Hmm. That's what I do. Okay. Um, you said, do not send monitoring spirits, cancel them. <laughs> don't, don't nobody want to monitor you unless you got some monitoring money. It's so funny. People think that people are sending spirits to look after them or to, to spy on them. Well, you ain't got nothing to spy on. You don't have no money. You broke. You live the sad life. Who wants to spy on that? Nobody hears. <laughs> it's always the people that that no one really wants to, to watch. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody, ain't nobody trying to look at you. You're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Shira, how to lose weight fast. Girl, stop eating. You said, should you begin with Ozempic if that's what you need, ma'am? You see all these people out here looking skinny in, in two weeks? I see what they did. <laughs> skinny in two weeks. Um, Girl. 
Greetings. Thank you. Greetings. Right. Lose weight fast is unhealthy. Okay. If you're trying to lose weight quick, then ask everybody who lost weight quick how they did it. Because they might have the answer. <laughs> Okay. You need. Okay. You said you need to stop eating spell. Then make you some water and just drink a whole thing of water before every meal and program it to eat less. So like eat less food. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Then say, so for example, if you if you are used to eating a large meal. This is what I'm going to start doing. But I'm a, I know I'm going to be peeing a lot of it. Get you like a bottle about this small or large. Drink this whole thing before you eat anything. And then you'll be full, too full to really eat the meal. This is what I used to do when I was smaller. When I was smaller, I used to drink um, a bottle of water or a container of water before each meal. And if I was ever hungry, like if I wanted a snack, before I would eat a snack, I'll get the water, drink it. And then in 10 minutes, if I was hungry, then I would get a small snack. But if you continue to drink water, it'll fill you up, hydrate your skin, make you look more youthful. And also whatever you're programming into your water is going to like, you know, vibrate. And, you know, become part of your frequency. So um, you can make like skinny water and talk about, I'm going to be um, losing weight. Um, every time I eat, I'm going to burn fat or I'm going to find a burn way to burn more fat today. Or blah, 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 blah. You know, speak it into your water. Pour it up before every meal and every snack. And that's literally going to fill you up and help you anyway. And keep you conscious of what you're eating. So, um. I promise you, if I did not drink water on, like, uh, uh, if I didn't drink a lot of water, I'd probably be way bigger. I'm trying to tell y'all, because water, like, is my best friend. <laughs> okay, Carrie, you said uh, you sent a super chat? Hold on, let me, let me see. Miss Carrie, tips for finding your own tribe, community, you're lonely. Girl, don't. <laughs> That's my tip. Don't. Don't look. Um, okay. Jay Booskin asks, all oh my, okay, I look amazing. Do I still stand by the videos I made eight years ago? I don't even know. I would have to go rewatch them to see how I feel because I think as time progresses, we change as people. We think different. We have different experiences that change our way of thinking or our belief system changes or our beliefs changes from day to day. One day we might believe this, the next day we might believe something totally different depending on our experience that we have had. So a lot of the things that I might have believed back in the day, if they're not backed scientifically, if if you can't find it and prove it scientifically, then you know it's a belief that can change. It, you know, you know what I'm saying? Or depending on um, your current experiences so that's how that's how i'll say it. if it's a if it can't be proven by science then it's a belief and it can definitely change depending on science and also depending on experiences so that's that's how i'll answer that sprinkle sprinkle um You said okra water. I've never tried okra water, but I love okra. Like eating okra. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I think about finding your tribe. Don't look for nobody, girl. Be sometimes a spiritual person, like I said, is a personal journey. Your tribe may not believe everything you believe. A group of people that are quote unquote spiritual are not going to have the exact same beliefs as you. So your tribe may turn into enemies fast if you come upon a disagreement and one of them is not as understanding or 
edu educated spiritually as the next. So it also depends on their passion for whatever they're learning about or whatever they're studying spiritually. It also depends on how hard they believe or, you know, how much they think they're right. It depends on how their ego is and da da da. da. So if you find a group of people that are just spiritual, you don't know their levels of, of, you know, how they think, how they feel, how passionate they are. So literally one day, you know, you could be with a group of people that think similarly, and then you could just say one thing that makes them mad and that they don't agree with. And so, you know, I, I prefer alone spiritual practices, solitary spiritual practices or belief systems, because you can change at any time without anyone judging you. You can read whatever you want without anyone judging you. You can dress, act, talk, walk, do different things without any judgment because it's only you. And you can literally impede your spiritual growth by being with a group of people that you're going to outgrow eventually anyway. Okay. So that is my belief. A, your spiritual journey is personal. If you're looking for associates and people to hang out with, um, look for people that are on a more shallow level for hobbies, for, um, you know, places that you like to go or crafts and uh, arts and crafts and stuff that you like to do. Don't base it so deeply. That's my advice. Oh, London, sprinkle, sprinkle. How do you remove mental, energetic and blockages? You are reliving the, like, um, you, you, you make the change yourself. So for example, you don't see them as blockage blockages or you don't see them as anything as you've described. What you do is create what you want. So for example, if there's something that you can't get past mentally, then you think around it or you think about something else that you don't have any problems with. And then you meet whatever thing that you were trying to accomplish there. So for example, if you can't get over your past or if there's something blocking you, then come at it from a different angle. You get it? Come at it from a different angle. Come at it from a different perspective. Come at it from the solution perspective and, and things like that. Don't try to continuously do the same thing if it's not working. So change your perspective. Okay. Because truth it's not fact. There's a difference between truth and fact. Truth is perspective. Fact is something that can be proven. So your perspective may only allow you to see certain things. And to you, that is the truth. But from someone from a different angle and a different perspective, your truth to them may not be true. You know, so from because they can see more or they can see on a different level. So what you think is true may not be true. Like, like it's, think about the iceberg. If there's an iceberg on top of a water, um, people, you don't know what's underneath it. From your perspective on the ocean, you think it's this small. If you've never looked at the perspective under the water, you wouldn't know how huge it was. So the truth is, is it small or large? So perspective, truth, and fact are totally, you know, they're not the same thing. So approach it from a different perspective. Oh, Navi, sprinkle, sprinkle. How about calling things in with water without working hard overall spells? Yeah. Program your water and you're programming yourself because we are 70% plus water. So when you're programming water and then you drink it, you're programming yourself. Okay. So you can program yourself, you can program your water, you can program other people. Program this water, whatever, whatever, whatever. Would you like a drink of water? You know? Um, or if, if water is too suspicious, would you like a cup of tea? You could do it even more with tea because you got the herbs working and that water working, okay? The program of herbs, we have specific herbs for what the, your intention is. Put that intention into that water, maybe into that cup of wh whoever, uh, whatever cup you're serving. I'm just like a cup of tea. And then like, if you, 
you had a spoon, you know, you stir whatever to, and you stir to the right, like clockwise, you're, that's going, you know, you're bringing things to you, okay? And you stir counterclockwise, you're removing, okay? So depending on what you're trying to do, also, uh, if you study physics, quantum physics or just regular physics, you understand mass. So you have the spoon, it's going into space or the liquid, and then you're moving it and you're creating change to which, and then you're speaking into it. So everything you're doing is literally science. And you're just programming this, like what I call, it's just a miniature version of the universe. And then you sip it, then you speak what you want. Okay, so when you're having tea with someone and you, and you know, you're doing this and have the conversation that's going to change the frequency as well. So you offer someone some tea, you want them to do this, this and that for you. So start talking about it after, you know, they've taken their sip because now they're programmed with your frequency. So they're going to vibrate on your level more and more likely to agree with you. All right. So, so water, magic, and more is literally, yes, it's science. Um, back in the old days, people didn't understand, um, you know, physics, science, you know, microbiology, micro, you know, anything on um, particles. So they had to use words like magic. Speak your words, your intention, because it's the same thing, except it's just less complicated scientifically. A lot of stories, a lot of um, things in biblical or holy books are also science, and they're just explained in a story form. But if the scientists can pick it out, if you give a book, a holy book to a scientist and someone who never studied science, the scientist will be able to pick science out of that book. Oh, J. J. Ellington, your mind is your most powerful spell too. That's right. What you think? It sure is. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, and when you okay. When you ever approach any type of magic or spell work, you can't approach it from a point of weakness. You always have to approach it from a point of strength and authority. A lot of ladies and a lot of guys and a lot of who, any, okay, it, I'm not just going to, it doesn't have to do anything with gender, but I know more ladies are always trying to do spells on men, but whoever you're trying to do spells on, approach it from the most powerful frequency. And, and, and things like that. Don't approach it from weakness or lack. Because when you do that, when you approach any type of spell work or magic from weakness or lack, that's your frequency. And that's your intention that you're putting into it. It's just not going to work well. So stop approaching it from weakness or lack or sadness. Approach it from power. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and it has also a lot to do with your mental and how you view yourself. If you're doing spells and you feel weak and like you don't have any control, of course, people are going to turn to magic. But what you want to do is let those magical things empower you. So, for example, you know things that other people don't know. That's power. You know about water and programming it. You know about herbs. You know about crystals. This is all powerful, okay? You know about things that other people don't know about. So instead of coming from a place of weakness, come from a place of strength, knowledge, and power. And when you speak and you do your spell work, it's going to be all that much more powerful. Don't come at it as a victim. Don't, don't. Without your herbs and, you know, teas and sprays and, you know, uh, crystals and stones, feeling like you've been defeated. You need to feel like you're getting ready to win. Okay. <laughs> that's how you approach it. It's all your frequency. And, you know, if you have trouble feeling like that, program your water 
to feel more confident and powerful and like you're all that. And drink that water all day before you do your spell work or the tea. And before you do it, that's the, that's the frequency you're going to be on. Put on some music that makes you feel like that as well. That also can go into your water, the music uh, frequency. So whatever music makes you feel your best, put that on. If y'all are religious, y'all can put whatever religious music on. I don't care. like Because magic works through you. It doesn't matter the name. It doesn't matter the religion. It doesn't matter the deity that you work with. It literally just matters your frequency and how that deity makes you feel. How that song makes you feel. How that knowledge in that religion makes you feel. It's all about your frequency. So whatever you're reading, whatever you, makes you feel good, use it. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's all your frequency. <laughs> okay. You don't want power. You already have power. So you can never really want it. So honestly, that's why, think about this. Most women don't seek power because they already have it. Men seek power, not women. Women are already powerful. We bring life to the planet. So this is another reason why women don't seek power like men do. You want to seek power? Seek women. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Shira, what steps would you <laughs> recommend for someone to acquire the same knowledge as you? Be a nerd. Read. Um, a lot of time reading. A lot of time thinking. A lot of time rejecting things that don't make sense to you. Not being afraid to think for yourself. That's number one. Not being afraid to think for yourself. Not being a people pleaser. If you're a people pleaser, you're going to go with the flow. You're going to go with what people want you to do. So being a, a free thinker, being someone that um, reads a lot and is passionate about what they read, but not necessarily one who has to believe everything they read. Just gathering the knowledge is enough. Gathering the lore Gathering the information, but not having to believe in it just because you've learned it. That's that's how. Okay, Navi, does rainwater, snow, moon water provide larger and more powerful effects compared to household water? Yeah, because like that's coming from the sky. So it's literally being recycled through the earth, and through the ocean, through the atmosphere, and through the alchemy of the planet. What you're getting out of the sink is chemically treated. Okay, so there's a big difference. Think of the Mother Earth as a being, and the water is the, her alchemy. The, you know, how water becomes rain, and then back to ocean water or stream water, how what the cycle that has to go through the morning dew, like the precipitation and all this kind of stuff, it has to go through the cycle of the planet. So you're getting all the people's energy, you're getting so much more energy from the sun, the grass, the animals, the everything that is on the earth. You're getting that energy instead of chemically treated energy that's flowing through pipes that are probably dirty, that is probably originally from the earth, but you want the pure forms. Now, I'm not saying that it does not have bacteria in it. Don't, you know, I wouldn't drink it because of the bacteria aspect. But at the same time, you can work with it by using it to put it in a spray or spraying yourself around yourself, like you're spraying your aura or watering a plant with it or, you know, using it in spell work that you're not going to ingest. Okay. Do you ever do anything with angel numbers of life? Um, when I'm bored, Asha, sprinkle, sprinkle. Honestly, for me, if you're focusing in on numbers and things like that, if, if that stuff is like really getting your attention, um, to me, maybe you could research what it means and just take it with a grain of salt. Don't focus your entire life around numbers and things like that. Because when you start to do that, you're starting to take the present moment away. Uh, and you're going to start reading more into signs and symbols because I did that. And it was great because you learn a lot. But when you're um, when you've learned enough or when you can tap into it and tap out of it, um, 
it's it's easier. So if you want to tap into something, you can start to see deeper into something or you can like just turn the switch off whenever you feel like it. So don't get to the point where everything you're looking for is numbers. Just turn it on and turn it off when you need it. You know, if you're not looking for answers, then don't uh, pay attention to the signs. That's if they keep showing up because you might feel like you're on the wrong path because you don't feel like you're on the right path. Then maybe look into it, but don't let it rule your life. That's all. Do I wear diamonds to enhance your power? You can. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, ma'am. You know, diamonds communicate with each other. So, like, when you wear diamond earrings or a diamond ring, um, it's literally a frequency that's communicating with each other, like, through your frequency. It also raises your frequency as well. Yes. Hello, Lauren. Sparkle, sparkle. So, yeah, if you're always looking for signs, it means like, you know, um, maybe you're on a journey and you're looking for yourself or you're looking for a, a path or a direction. But if you're if you, when you stop looking for signs and start creating the life that you want, then, you know, it's a better it's a better thing. But if you know how to interpret and read the signs, you can also help other people as well. Or you can see deeper into things when you want to You become more of a seer. Okay, Jibu Skin Sprinkle Sprinkle. Do I respond to my Patreon messages? Okay, are you on my spiritual Patreon, the Ashira? Okay, I'm going to check it after this video. Um, definitely, I'll respond to you after the video if, if you've written me there. Okay. Um, if you're on my other Patreon, yes, I respond there um, probably more often because I get more people writing me there. So I, if y'all are writing me on the other Patreon, I'm definitely going to respond after this video. How do you. How do you begin a spiritual routine? When you wake up in the morning, drink some water. <laughs> some people like warm water, tea, but like get your day started by programming your intentions that you want for the day. And that's that should help you with the start, you know. Um, if you don't like program everything, that's a good start. I'll say that. Program everything with your intention. So before you spray your perfume. You know, program what you want this perfume to do. Bring me some money. You know. Um, start programming stuff. That's number one. That's going to help you. You'll see from there. You just purchased the Elixir Phase 1. It'll help you move forward, be successful in your business, and leave dusty. Any suggestions to prepare for it? Yes. Have your plan. So that you can execute it fast. Because you like once you start taking the phase one of the elixirs, you're gonna have a lot of energy and you like a get like a lot of get up and go and determination to do what it is that you're getting ready to do. So make sure you have a plan so they can go smoothly. So start making a plan. Thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for getting it. Sure, how do you get rid of anxiety once and for all? I've been creating your reality and stop looking to the future. And, you know, people that have a lot of anxiety look to the future too much. Um, live in your present moment. Enjoy life now. If you suffer from anxiety, make plans. And not plans that you absolutely have to accomplish, but plans that are flexible. So, for example, like, let me, let me, let me get this. Okay, I have a planner. I have several planners. I got a lot of planners. Some plans are for different things. So if you don't know what you're doing in a week from now, this might be causing you anxiety because you don't know what life is bringing to you. Or someone may be causing you anxiety because you don't know what if they're going to be in your life or not. Regardless of that person or whatever, write down what you're going to be doing. So whether that dude call you or not, or whether you get the job or not, or whether something happens or not, write down what you're going to do anyway. So, for example, in a week from now, I'm going to lunch. And then I'm going to go shopping. It doesn't matter where you go shopping. You can go to Dollar Tree. But write that down. And so, no matter what, you're going to feel safe because you know next Thursday, you're going to be at lunch, chilling, 
and then you're going to go shopping no matter what happens. And if you don't do that because plans changed, or if you don't get there, and then write it down for the next day. Oops, I was busy and I was doing that. So let me let me write that down. Write down, create your own life, literally. And you can stop having anxiety and basing your life on other people, other people's time, other circumstances, or the future that hasn't happened yet. Make your future. So when you plan stuff and don't stress about not accomplishing it or not, just say, okay, well, I'm so in control of my life that I can literally just write it on to the next day and just write relax on this day instead, because that's all I did. So, don't have too much anxiety over things that aren't happening. You saw a shapeshifter? Are they alien? Girl, I don't know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Ask them. <laughs> What crystals are or stones do you recommend for love and money? Uh, rose quartz and amazonite. Um, any green stone will attract money. So look for stones that are um, green in color. Pyrite also attracts money. It's just like fool's gold. So pyrite stone. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I find pyrite and any green stone definitely brings money. Like this bracelet that I have. Buddy. <laughs> and I sell these on my store. Um, the last link in the description bar, Dark Realm online occult shop not the etsy store but my other shop where i sell like spiritual goods mm -hmm. hold on let me see something advice for tarot youtube channel um how many are there what's going to make yours stick out Answer those questions, and then you'll have your answer. Okay. Um, thank you, Lauren. I'm answering the questions that I might have missed. Okay, yeah. Ellie, that about the tarot channel is... Do something different, ma'am. You gotta you gotta have a an angle, ma'am. <laughs> and be consistent. If you're always consistent and you have your own way of doing things, you're gonna be successful. Don't like don't really worry about you know being successful. Worry about having fun, doing what you like to do and making the channel specifically yours. Like I do. Like for my channel, I don't worry about what people think, what other people are doing. I do what I want. And I continuously do it on a consistent level. Okay. Would you teach your daughter your teachings? I would teach my daughters whatever they were interested in and learning. I don't force any of the knowledge on anyone except for when they speak words. Because I don't like people speaking negative or positive. No, I don't like them speaking negative. Because I know how important words are. But other than that, their spiritual journey is their own personal journey. And whatever they're interested in and in learning, they can ask me or they can do their own research. I have all these books. They can look it up on the internet. So I don't force anything on anyone because like, who wants that? <laughs> but the thing is, when they see what you do and they see how it works, then they may try it. And if it works for them, that'd be great. If it doesn't, then they'll seek other other ways to, you know. Do whatever they do. So I never, I never force beliefs on anybody. Okay, because my beliefs may change. You know, my beliefs can change at any moment if I choose them to. So I wouldn't force anyone to believe something specific. If in a year from now I might believe something totally different. Okay. You got you got the siren splash. Thank you. 
Yes, it's, it's on my other channel, but I'm going to link it here on the end of the video on in the uh, comments. But yes, y'all get Sirens Splash. It smells like water, um, melon, white rose, and um, um, a tad bit of maybe gardenia, but just barely. Um, but mostly it's um, very watery mermaid smell. It's very nice. And... It's an oil based, so it lasts a very long time. And the bottle is beautiful. And it comes in, you should receive yours in a, like a little drawstring um, bag that looks really pretty. So you get a little drawstring bag with it. Um, I don't have five over here. Oh, I know y'all, this person is probably not watching. So I'll have to thank them on my other channel. But they sent me the most mermaidy shoes that I've ever seen. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get the other. And her name is CJ Sparks. So thank you, Miss CJ Sparks. She sent me these cute shoes. They come like all wrapped up, so they can't like mess up. Aren't these cute? I'm going to be wearing these to my vacation. <laughs> and like they send you like a pack of extra crystals in case they fall off so you can glue them on again. I think this is by Heinrich. Heinrich. These are on um, Amazon or something. But aren't they cute? Okay, Yoko. Thanks for your wisdom. Appreciate you, Yoko. For the Thank you, girl. Thank you, Goddess Laurel. I appreciate you. Okay. Um, what do you think of empaths and the pain that they feel that others feel? I think it's um a focus thing. So it depends on what your focus is on. If your focus is on you or yourself or other things, then you tend not to have that type of empathy towards other people. So um, if you like it, great. If you don't, then you need to focus more on yourself and uh, other things that you like. Okay, Shira, we love to collaborate on a product. What's the best way to contact you? Oh, G Booskin Springs. It depends on what it is because I'm not really doing a lot of um, collabing on this channel at this time. So it depends on what it is. You know, is it a professional product that is available like worldwide to everyone? Or is it something more like a small business thing? Because that all depends on when I would be able to collab with you if I choose to or not. Because a lot of people, and I'm not saying this is you. But a lot of people will, you know, want to collab and everybody has a little small spiritual business and, you know, I can't do them all. But I definitely wouldn't mind if you shout yourself out on a post, but it depends on what it is. So um, best way to contact me is through my Instagram on in my DMs, Shooter7, with the blue check on Instagram. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. So if I'm interested in it, I'll let you know. Thank you, Lauren. Um, she says, what do you think of Beyonce's new country era? And also watch True Detective Season 4 as discussed in Divine Feminine. She's awake. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, first of all, Beyonce's always been country. If you ever hear heard her talk. I mean, I'm in Texas. We grew up um, in Texas, in Houston. That's You can't even drive nowhere without seeing no cow or no horse. Everybody, most of the people from Texas are literally growing up country. Country music. They done been to some rodeos. There's a horse down the street. Like literally walk, like walking distance, you can go see a horse. Most of the time, depending on, you know, what side of the city you're on. <laughs> so I think she's probably always been able to sing and do country music. I just think that the reason she's doing it now is because she can and she has the influence and the power to really create and allow, you know, um, her voice to be heard in that genre, as well as to allow other people's voice to be heard that were probably not um, 
typically your quote unquote country singers, but now she's opened the door for a lot of people that probably want to do country or have been doing country. And I, uh, I think it's a good thing. Plus, you know, the roots of country music are gospel and um, banjo, which is, you know, an African instrument. So I, I really don't think that it's anybody's genre. I just think she did it because she can and she could and she did. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle. Um, I think everybody in Texas has cowboy boots and a hat. Then probably several. All right. So I think it's interesting. Like it, I have her first um, like vinyl album from uh, Act One Renaissance, and she's on horses. She's dressed like a cowgirl and the whole thing. So I mean, it was kind of like um, a telling what was coming next. Country. <laughs> okay. Um. Um, go to the description bar, Nikki, if you're looking for my shop. And it's in the last link, or it's called Dark Realm Online Occult Shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, it's, it's so weird because everybody thinks, okay, it's so weird about this country thing because I live in Texas. That's all we see every day. Like every day I drive by two, three ranches. I see horses and cows every day. I see cowboys every day. It's the norm. When I worked in the city, um, like in Houston, literally you can drive and have like a, a giant skyscraper. And in two miles, you could have like a ranch in the middle of the city with just horses. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you live in Texas, especially Houston, you're going to see cowboys everywhere. You're going to see people wearing Wrangler jeans and boots everywhere. You're going to hear that accent because that's where we live. So it's not anything weird to me. It's actually like most major artists back in the day often crossed over and did country. I mean, like like Ray Charles did country. Nat King Cole did a country album. Uh, like a lot of like really good artists who crossed over and topped all the other charts in different, you know, genres, eventually did a country song. So, and a lot of those songs, you know, did very well, but they weren't trying to, you know, penetrate the country uh, industry because it wasn't that big back then. But honestly, people have been doing, especially black people have been doing country music forever and being very successful at it. They just weren't re well received. Um, because a lot of the stereotype, you know, so I feel like it's just normal for me. I grew up listening to the country. Um, I didn't really listen to it like on a regular basis, but I knew country songs. I knew words. I knew like country artists and stuff because you know, I live in Texas. And just you don't really even have to listen to country music to even be a cowboy or a cowgirl. You just have to know how to ride a horse, be on a ranch and like wrangle cows. I don't know. So, I think Justin Timberlake had a country album. You said Madonna had a country album. I mean, everybody in their mama going to have a country album. Lil Nas X. It's just a genre. It doesn't really matter. It's just normal for some people, depending on where you live. And it, and it must feel weird, like, from the very state that you're from is considered a country state. You should be able to do country with no problem. Oh, Jim Star Sprinkle Sprinkle thoughts on pea magic using our wombs water. You can use whatever water you want. It's all from the same source. <laughs> you know, so for example, I'm going to tell y'all, you can use whatever you want, man. Drink this. Eventually, it's going to make it to other parts of your body. It just, it's all the same. Like That's the thing about water. It's the one thing that's united and separate all at the same time. It's a it's a paradox. It's the one thing that is united and separate all at the same time. Y'all know the Kanye West song, We Are Water? We are water. When he was in his uh, gospel stage. You know, okay, so Kanye very smart. Um, he's very spiritually smart. He's very 
symbolically smart. He knows what he's doing. It, it might not look like it, but he do. He already know. He knows without knowing. But anyway, so water is going to get to wherever it needs to get where it needs to get there. This is why like water signs are so flexible or mutable because it said what it said. It's going to get there when it's going to get there. It's going to take the path of least resistance and it is what it is. And it's everywhere at the same time. Okay, it is an energy. It is an essence. It is a everything. The fourth, the four states of matter depend on water. Right, you got the, the first state of matter. So liquid, solid, gas, and then you have the plasma, which is like fire, gas reaction. So, which basically is lightning, right? So water forms matter, all states, liquid, water. You got to have water to have matter. This is why when I say you speak into your water, you create your intention. It's going to materialize. It's going to turn into matter. It's going to affect matter. It's going to create something from your own words. And, if y'all weren't here earlier during the video, I did an example of, you know, of course, you know, it's not just water working alone. It, you have your breath and your voice, you have your air and you have your fire and you have your water. And so your voice is literally a spell. And then you have, this is your breath and it's affecting matter. You, see, you do this long enough and you speak about something long enough. You say something long enough, it's going to wear down this piece of candy or cough drop, right? Keep speaking on it. And it's like, I can feel it literally getting sticky. And if you do this for a long time, do the time lapse, this, this is going to affect this material matter. So I know words, speaking, you know, the water in your throat and all the sound and everything affects the material world. So um, that's why when you speak, it better be good. Better be what you want. <laughs> better be, you know, you better say what you want. And okay, a lot of people think about this. Oh, I said something and I didn't mean it. And I don't want to, and I want to take back those words. Okay. I call back all my energy. And words that were unwanted, I call them back to reverse the negative effects if that's what you want. But sometimes it got you to the point where you got to be a better person or that you learn more. So you might not want it all back. A lot of people live in regret and they want to undo stuff, but that's not how you learn and grow. But if you gave something away and you instantly regret it. Try that because if someone fooled you or tricked you and you learned your lesson and you can instantly call it back, you know what I'm saying? But if it's something from years and years ago that, you know, you wouldn't be who you are today without that happening or that lesson, don't do that. But definitely if it's something instant that you just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I wasn't paying attention. Maybe, but I don't really believe in trying to go back and fix stuff because it got you to the person that you are today. Uh oh, Sophia, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, what are my top three books I recommend currently? Greeting from Sweetie, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, um, actually I ordered two books and they should be arriving today about water magic, mermaid, mermaid lore. I like to read like because of the symbolism and also you know, why people believed in certain things and also water magic. They are linked in the, um, they're on Amazon. I'm going to post a link right here. Uh, click on that and you should be able to see some of the books that I'm recommended for like water, water magic and stuff like that, mermaids and stuff. But and also all the other books that I think are interesting are also in that link. So I just look through that whole link on Amazon and you you'll see all the stuff that I like. Sprinkle sprinkle. 
Now, it doesn't mean that I've read all of those books, but I probably have um, read most of them. Some of them I just recommend because I think they're interesting and I might order them one day. But most of them I, I have. You said Rihanna had a music video about water. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, because she's a water sign too. She's Pisces. Okay. What if you are not happy with the person you have become because of the incident? You can't undo the incident. You can, you can change your actions and the way you think though. So then reprogram yourself by programming your water or just programming yourself to speak positive about yourself. So or you can program your water and you like, today I'm going to, you know, be nicer and kinder to people. Or today I'm going to be more cautious of people that I, you know, deal with or whatever. But program your water on a daily basis and you're programming yourself to change gradually. And then you can become the type of person that you create for yourself. You don't have to worry about the past and how it changed you. But every day you can work on yourself. That's living in the present and um, taking responsibility and acknowledging, you know, whatever, and working on yourself. Hello, oh, Lauren. Thoughts on Janet Jackson when I was little? They said she was MJ. Why are we? Okay, well, if she was MJ, then why did they have two birth certificates? And why does she have a child? Um, I think you need to put down the tabloids and pick up some water and start drinking it. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh oh, Andromeda. Tips on maintaining a high vibration daily. Drink water, smell good, look good. Um, looking good is very important. Now, let me tell y'all. It, it doesn't mean that you have to be the most attractive person. It just means you have to feel good about what you look like. So I, that's why every day I get up and I try to look good. You don't have to look extra, extra. You just have to look good and feel good. Look good, feel good, vibrate high. Drink your water, uh, healthier foods. Um, don't drink alcohol unless like, you know, not don't drink alcohol early in the day. If you want a little sip for happy hour or something like that, great, but don't overindulge and you should be fine. Your frequency is high because you make it high. We are in charge of that. Our, your frequency is high because you make it high. You put effort into yourself. You look good. You eat the foods you like. You do the things you like to do. You drink the water after you've programmed it, you know, to, you know, vibrate on a higher frequency. You listen to music that makes you feel good and vibrate on a higher frequency. You watch movies that you enjoy and that make you vibrate on a higher frequency. You go to places that you enjoy going to that make you vibrate on a higher frequency. You take yourself out of situations that make you vibrate low. So if there's a person that makes your energy vibrate low, don't deal with them no more. If there's a place you have to go on a daily basis that you can't avoid that makes your um, frequency low, then find something that combats it and makes it higher. So for example, get your your earbuds and listen to good music while you're in that place you don't like. Um, get you some earbuds. Or wear a cute outfit so now you're focused more on fashion rather than you know wherever you're going. Um, read a good book. Bring a good book to where you have some downtime you can read and not have to worry about being bored or focusing on something else. Delete all the stuff on your social media that bring your frequency down and don't follow things that bring your frequency down. So it's literally you have to change everything um, and make your world how you want it to be. Uh oh, Irma, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. So take charge of your life. Stop allowing others to make you feel a certain way and create the life you want by creating every little single detail that makes you vibrate on a higher frequency. Okay. Like it's not, it's not like, okay, I'm vibrating. You say you're vibrating on a low frequency, then do something that makes you happy. Listen to a song that makes you happy. Wear an outfit that makes you feel good. You know, put that stuff on. If you, I, I guarantee you, if you wake up in the morning, drink a glass of water, program it to and vibrate higher, listen to your favorite song in the morning that you really like, make your, pull yourself together, put on one of your outfits that make you feel confident and you know you look good in, you know. You're going to be vibrating high right then and there. And that's literally it. <laughs> so continue to do those things that make your life worth living every day. You're going to vibrate high. Yeah, I talked about herbal baths earlier. Whatever 
you want to create in your bathtub, I suggest it to use like a cheesecloth or a little sachet or like tea bag. So don't get all them herbs in the bathtub because it's hard to clean. But whatever intention or whatever you want your bath to do, you know, get the correct herbs. Um, I have herbs for my garden that I use and everything. Um, program your water when you're running it. Um, you can get sea salt. I sprinkle that in there and give it the little ocean vibes, the ions and stuff like that. Okay. You said, do you do art magic? Um, I probably have and don't even realize it. I used to draw a lot, paint a lot, um, sculpt a lot. So sometimes naturally it comes out in your artistic work. So when I look back at a lot of my artwork, I can see that I was doing it unconsciously. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So basically prioritize yourself. Yes. That's how you hire your frequency. Make it about you. Thank you, Sade Sprinkle Sprinkle. What spices do I recommend? Spicy spices. <laughs> What are your favorite herbs to use? Roses, mint. I love roses, mint, because mint brings in the money. It smells good. It's refreshing. And roses smell good and they're pretty. And it brings also like higher free. It's the most high rose oil. Like if you take the oil from a rose, it's the highest vibrating frequency oil that you can get. Rose oil. Oh, St. Hudson, Sprinkle, Sprinkle. Do I program tea too? Yeah, because you can program the water in the tea. You can program the herbs. So, yeah, so you can program whatever you want. Or you don't. If you just want to have a regular cup of tea without programming it or thinking about it, then don't do it. Just have you a cup of tea. But when you're doing things with intention, then it's also powerful. So you don't have to do everything unless you're using your intention. So when I'm just having a cup of tea, it doesn't always mean it's programmed. It doesn't always mean it's doing something. It doesn't always mean I'm focused on, you know, whatever, whatever. But when I want to, it's there for me and I can use it to, you know, heighten my frequency. Okay. So. Thank y'all. Appreciate the sprinkle sprinkles. Yeah, you can make rose water. I used to make my own rose water. I still do. Um, you just get a pot, you just get like a bunch of petals, put it in a pot. <clears throat> um, you just put some water in there, of course. I put the lid on it, right? And then like let it simmer on low for like maybe five, two to five minutes. And then you like scoop out the roses, squeeze all the extra you know, rose juice in there. And the water will have like a like a rosy smell and you can use that. It smells really good. If you don't have a garden, you can just go buy roses and do the same thing at home. Or buy rose water online. Okay, Natasha. You, thank you, girl. You're, um, okay. You rarely have any great experience to socialize and networking with high profile female. How do I make connection with them and not look like begging? Okay. Huh? I'm not understanding. Like, are you trying to make friends with someone? Okay, here's my advice. Don't try to make friends with anyone. Let them want to be friends with you. Attract, attract, don't chase, ma'am. Not even women, sprinkle, sprinkle. Always attract, do not chase. What would, what is going to make you a good friend or social or networking person? You gotta attract them to you. You can't be desperate looking for them. They gotta wanna look for you, ma'am. So for example, how you look, how you dress, how you walk, how you talk, how you carry yourself, how confident you are is going to attract 
So like it's like you're putting a spell on everyone at the same time by how you feel about yourself and how you carry yourself. So, for example, if I was sitting in a room with a bunch of women and, you know, I'm just sitting there minding my business. I'm not desperate for attention. I don't need them. In my mind, they need me. <laughs> you see? So think like that. And you're definitely going to attract. Okay, Sade, sprinkle, sprinkle. Tips to unblock chakras. Don't think about it. Don't think about your chakras as being blocked. Okay, because like what is chakra? It's energy, right? It's energies, it's frequencies, right? Drink water, um, focus on what you want and don't focus on chakras being blocked. A lot of people, okay, so here's my thing. If you are Buddhist, Hindu, or whatever type of spiritual, you know, belief system that studies chakras, then you might feel like something is blocked, right? But if you never knew what a chakra was in your life, ever, if nobody told you about it, if you never read a book about it, would you still feel like they were blocked? So think about it like that. If you ask a three-year-old or a four-year-old if their chakra is blocked, they're going to look at you crazy. And you're like, what? What's that? I don't even know. Is it? I don't have no blocks. I put my Legos up. So it's, it's you thinking too much <laughs> about things that you're allowing to rule your thoughts. So for example, would you even know what a chakra was if nobody told you about it? Would you think it was blocked? Sprinkle, sprinkle. You said ignorance is bliss. Yes, it is. It's, it's okay to become ignorant sometimes when you're overthinking everything. It's okay not to think about things that you never thought about before you learned about it. Like I said, you can learn all you want. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh-oh, Brianna. Thank you, girl. She said, love you, goddess. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So it's only going to affect you if you believe that it is blocked or you believe in chakra system. You can believe in what you want when you want, if it serves you, and then you cannot believe it the next day. That's how magic works. It's knowledge, not belief. It's only belief when you need it to work. Okay, thank you, Jay Booskin. I'll definitely check my DMs on my Instagram and, and, and I'll get back with you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Jay Booskin. Hope I seen that right. Um <clears throat> so spiritual people tend to fall victim to believing everything that they learn. And approach it from a scientific point of view or a um, archaeological point of view when like for example if you're an archaeologist and you go to a different country a different land and you see all their lore and their myths and their artifacts and you learn about them and you learn the history and you learn what they were for and you learn their culture and religion does that mean you believe in them no it means you know about them you could probably take a test and pass about you know, everything that you learned. And it also means that you probably um, know more than you did when you got there, but it doesn't mean you have to believe in that. So take it with a grain of salt. And also if, if your religion or if your spiritual practice is all about something and it's not serving you, then change it. That's the beauty about being on a personal journey a river or a path of water. It can change at any time. It's going to go to the path of least resistance. Okay. You're, if your spirituality is giving you blocks or if, if your spirituality has the term, something is blocked, it's time to change your spirituality. The flow of water goes to the path of least resistance. So I'm not getting ready to 
invest in any type of spiritual um, belief system that's going to block me in some way or that's going to even have the word block in it. I'm not even going to worry about that because I'm just going to change directions. So <laughs> y'all wanted to know a book I'm reading now. This is not in the description or in the, the link. At least I don't think it is, but you can find this on any at any bookstore. I'm reading The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. And this is really good. I'm, I'm not very far, but it's about like a girl in India who's forced into child marriage, but it's not what you think. That's how far I've gotten, but it all has to do with water, their bloodline, what it goes back to. And I think it comes, the story goes into modern day eventually. It's like about water and how water just surrounds us. There's rivers, how it's a part of everything. And so I think it's a metaphor and, and the person that wrote it is literally a medical doctor. So they use a lot of medical and scientific ways to use and you know their description when they're describing things. So that's why I like it. Okay, Shade, Sprinkle Sprinkle, can you make elixirs available? And can, I can't because of customs, y'all. Like a long time ago, we tried, and I'm gonna explain to you why it's not. A long time ago, we tried, and people are so used to Amazon. People are so used to quick ship. People don't realize that these elixirs are made and they're not shipped by Amazon. It's not made in like a big giant, you know, uh, warehouse. So when you ship liquids, sometimes they get stuck in customs. Sometimes it doesn't make it there for like a month, you know, or sometimes it's sent back because of customs. So that's why we don't do it. The best thing I can tell you is if you have a friend in the U.S. and they can order it for you, and maybe if you receive mail to and from each other a lot, they're less likely to check if there, you know, is um, records of you mailing each other a lot, then they can mail it to you. But for companies and businesses, it's too hard. And plus the customer service is impossible to keep up with especially from different parts of the world, different countries. So I have to stay local because of customs. I'm so sorry. I mean, it's just what it is. The complaint to your postal services and customs. <laughs> All right. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, How can you turn on and off a belief? Just like you turn off on and off the TV show. Just like you turn on and off anything. So for example, um, when you start to really believe in something to the fact where it's changing your relationships, it's changing life, that's when you should get out of it right, right away. Because let me tell you, you're becoming a slave to a belief, to a perspective. OK, because you're not living, you're letting it run you. You're not running it. A beliefs, sayings or, you know, spiritual practices are to raise your frequency, not to lower it. So once it starts to lower your frequency, change, change it, go do something else. If you eat the same food every day. And you don't like what you're eating because you eat the same thing every day. Your frequency is going to get lower when it's time to eat because it's like, oh, this again. You know, or if it's unhealthy for you all the time, every day, or you're getting too much into it, you know, like people get too extreme about certain things and then it lowers your frequency instead of heightens it. So if your spirituality is starting to lower your frequency, change it up, change your beliefs, change it to something that you're more interested in right now. So, for example, if you're used to, um, you know, dealing with chakras and meditation and all that stuff, and it's you saying, what about block chakras? And da -da -da -da, like, if that's lowering your frequency and it's not doesn't have the same appeal as it did when you first started learning about that stuff and doing it, switch to something else. Start doing some water magic. Start getting yourself out. Start walking around. Go to the beach. You know, go sit outside by the pool. Do a little mister. 
you know, do something different. Put it on hold for a little while and just do something different. Stop thinking about something that's lowering your frequency and switch it up to something that makes you happier or that's different or something new you can learn about. And then the same thing, when that decides to, you know, not raise your frequency anymore, switch to something different. Do something better. Do something more fun. Or incorporate it all and create it up and mix it up and make your own form of spirituality because it is a personal journey. It is a creative personal journey. So you don't have to follow someone's book or guide in a, in a spirituality word for word. You can literally write your own book and incorporate everything that you want in it and how you like it, specifically catering to you and your frequency. So you don't have to follow a certain set of rules. You don't have to believe in everything that's been put out there. You can believe in what you want, what you don't want. Sometimes you can change your belief system. You can do whatever you want. It is your journey. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Create what you want. That's how you keep your frequency high because you do what you want. You learn about what you want. Just because you're reading something doesn't make it gospel. Just because someone wrote it a long time ago, don't make it truth. Just because someone wrote about it, lived by it, and had good results, don't mean everyone everyone will. And you might take a piece of knowledge from that place, a piece of knowledge from this place, a piece of knowledge from that person over there, make up your own knowledge from your own experience, and write it all down and see what works for you. Don't just adopt something. Create your own. That's what I do. But oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. You're right, Shira. I don't know why he, why we hold on to things, beliefs, and ideas so tightly. Try something new and simple and effective. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So the reason why we hold on to things so tightly is because a lot of it is metaphor, science, and um, things like that that are supposed to be passed down verbally from generation to generation. But now that we have books you know, computers and things like that. We don't have to hold so tight to those belief systems in order for those stories to be told and retold and passed on with certain hidden knowledge in it. I'll say that. We can literally not take it literally anymore. And we can do what makes us happy and raises our frequency now that we have technology. Um, okay, so... Whatever makes you vibrate on a higher frequency and that's working for you right now, then that's what you do. If it's not working for you next week, change it up to something fun, something different, something that you're interested in. If you have a system that works for you and you never want to change it and it continuously makes your frequency high, then stick to it. It's all it's all personal. Mm -hmm. Am I writing a spiritual book? Hmm. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I already have a spiritual book out there right now. It's linked in the description bar. It's called How to Work with Dark Matter or Dark Energy. And definitely How to Manifest with Dark Matter and Dark Energy. Check that out. It goes into the science and the magic. So you can get both, like, in the alchemy. A water spirit visited you, and she was stunning and alluring, but spirit didn't feel, the spirit didn't feel benevolent. She told me, I knew her. What does this mean? Um, do you know water? <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Go listen to the Kanye West song, We Are Water. It explains it all. Water spirit, water, you're 70% water. Everything is water. The, the air you're breathing has a percentage of humidity, which is water. Everything is connected to water. So, of course, you know that. Of course, you know that water spirit because it's water. <laughs> Everybody knows water. When you're in the womb, you hear water in a heartbeat. You hear your mother's amniotic fluid swishing around you like the ocean, and you hear water. That's why when you hear 
the um the sound of when they they hear the heartbeat you hear that swishing sound and then the heartbeat you're listening to water everything is connected to water so you're always going to know water how to use watery mindset and magic and technology well you can get you a cute phone case that looks like water or some seashells or something i need to get i actually have one that i need to put on and switch it up but you can literally um put a screensaver that looks like ocean water energy like i have like a little water and ocean stuff on my phone um you can play um water ambiance on your tv or your phone you know while you're relaxing or reading a book or going to bed um change the backgrounds on your computer and I, I guess when you if you clean your computer or your phone with some type of liquid or you know whatever you can program that too um but like technology and water if you really want to learn about technology and water, Leonardo da Vinci is a really good person to um, study because he was literally fascinated with water and he he created a lot of um, inventions that involve water, fountains, um, bridges, the way like water wheels and stuff like that. If some of his notebooks, if you can order like some of da Vinci's notebooks online, I think I actually have some um, linked in that description um link that i've been linking with all my spiritual references and things that i like you can probably go find it in one of the da vinci notebooks and it'll show you how water sparked his um, technological advancements sprinkle sprinkle sorry i had something um how how do we find and get to know the deity that watches over you? Um, honestly, go look in the mirror. Sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. Your fourth and fifth dimensional selves. <laughs> All right. Follow divine wellness. Thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's my current belief. Yes. Then how do you know if it's a demonic spirit? If it's asking you for some money <laughs> and you don't, and it's not your child, it's a demonic spirit. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Especially, uh, not if it's a woman though. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay, so a demonic spirit literally is your lower, like your lower energy, your lower self, things that you like surrender to to you know um fall in your lower self so anything that's self-serving or anything that's not good for everyone involved so for example you know you're on a diet or you know you're not supposed to be doing this or you're not supposed to be doing that and all of a sudden someone comes with whatever you're not supposed to be doing on a platter and they're like hey here you go, just a little bit. You know, it's more of like a temptation or a falling into your lower self that's going to eventually lower your frequency because you're trying to improve yourself. So that's how you know. If it's if it's something that's going to lower your frequency eventually, that's how you know. <laughs> but uh -uh, you're trying to lower my frequency. I mean, it might temporarily be high, but after that, it's just going to go lower. So that's how you know. If it's trying to lower your frequency, even if it's by enticing you, that's how you know. Uh-huh. He said, but this is their leader. No, it's not. Not everything is perspective, you know. So your perspective on something, if I'm trying to get you to, okay, if a dusty is trying to get you to sleep with them for free, that's the dust demon. <laughs> You're lowering your frequency. You're lowering your values. You're lowering yourself. That's that's a dust demon right there. A man a long time ago, you ladies, a man a long time ago had to ask for your hand in marriage, give you some type of money in order to even get close enough to you to where sleeping with you was possible. 
And now they just think it's for free. So it's not free. Back in the old days, you had to marry, even still in some countries, you have to have a marriage license before you can get a hotel room. So who, you know, it just all depends on your perspectives, your beliefs, and what you want to um, use to heighten your frequency or lower it. So therefore, if you feel like your value is high and someone's taking your value for granted, then you dismiss them. That's literally it. <laughs> it. There's no arguing with it. That's just how you feel about yourself. That's just your personal frequency. And if they can't match it or reach the standards, then no, no love loss on to the next. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. You said the the price of vagina has went way down, but there's still a price on it. There's no price on penis. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> and it's only went way down in your opinion, or wherever you live. It ain't way down where I live. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Maybe where you live, it went down. It's up here. <laughs> and all women should know that. Okay. I don't know where you live. I don't don't ever move there, ladies. Wherever you at, don't go. <laughs> you in prison? Because it should be sky high. All right. Let's just unavailable, then there's no price at all. They shall call in something else these days. <laughs> anyway. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So definitely I gotta go in a few minutes, y'all. So get your questions out. Then I'll leave at around two. To my time, anyway. Mm hmm. So, water. Let's talk about water in the female. Right? Everything that happens pertaining to water is literally a cycle of birth rebirth and transmutation and the person or the being that represents that the most on the planet is the female so water is a very feminine energy to work with and it's the most powerful water is the most powerful force so definitely use it in your magic definitely know that as a um as a being that does bring life to the planet, that you are also very powerful. Never approach anything or any magic or belief or whatever from a, um, a perspective of weakness or powerlessness or desperation. Approach it from the most powerful perspective and you will always win. Okay? That's the best. That's the best way to look at anything. Okay. How can you be okay? How to become more material and set your foundation in abundance and riches? Um, the best way is to realize this. Study the four states of matter. The four states of matter. Eventually. It's going to get to this and then into a plasma form, which is unseen. So everything is a form of matter. It's just the density of it. So you just need to focus more on the denser forms of matter, such as money, uh, material things. And when you focus on it from a spiritual perspective, um, like I said, you're going to be able to affect materially things. So like I had a cough drop or a piece of candy in my hand. I was literally spraying it. And I said, eventually... You know, speaking words into existence, your breath, your steam, your um, 
the humidity that comes out of your throat, it's going to wear down that piece of candy or that cough drop by speaking it into existence, right? This is a form of matter. You can't touch it. It's not solid, but it is a, it's a gas, which is one of the states of matter. You'll study science and you'll be able to understand that when you speak something, when you want something, you're going to change your frequency. It's going to affect the material world in some way. And you're, it's going to bring it to you. You're going to attract it. So focus more on the item or the material thing that you would like to see in your presence. Can you elaborate on path of least resistance in water? Thank you, girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Nobby. Um, stop doing things that are overcomplicated. Stop working so hard. Stop overcomplicating things. If there are, if there's an easier way to say something, then say it easier. If there's an easier way to get some, then get it easier. As long as it's legal, you know what I'm saying? Some people use unnecessary um, words just to say like one thing. And some people will write a whole paragraph when they could have summed it up in a sentence. Some people will go out of their way, take the long route, work hard, do something else but th when there's a way to get stuff done easier. Um, if y'all know anybody who's old and they still have a phone book and they go and look up phone numbers in the phone book, when you could just literally look up the number on the, on the phone or go to the website and find out the answer that you need, that's the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance is uncomplicating things or doing what's easier and still um, you know, gonna lead to success. So never choose the hardest route. That's it. Um, yeah, also Lulu says, think smarter, not harder. Exactly, think smarter, not harder. So path of least resistance is, okay. If you're having trouble, like I always talk about this on the other channel. If you're having trouble with one guy, find someone that, you're, that likes you more, path of least resistance. You got, this dude won't give you no money, Path of least resistance, find one that will. <laughs> Don't sit here and work on this one dude that you can't change, begging him. Oh, no, 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 no. Just go get another one. Path of least resistance, man. Okay. Y'all forget that y'all have infinite options and ways, like, like they always do this test where you like roll this water off your hand. Every time you do it, it's going to go in a different direction depending on your frequency, the blood, your heart rate and how the blood pumping in your vein and the skin hydration and all this kind of stuff. It's going to go in the path of least resistance. Okay. No matter what you do. So just know that it's just science. This dude said no, this dude says yes. This job offer um, didn't, you know, call you back. This one did. Oh, Norma, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. Always know you have infinite options. That's it. Path of least resistance has infinite options. Come from a place of power in your thinking instead of someone who doesn't have any. And you will always win. I promise y'all. Okay. You said there are more women on the planet than men. That's true because men are dying out. They said in like a million years, there'll be no more men on the planet. <laughs> because, you know, the reason. <laughs> Just do your research. If you don't, if you're not fulfilling your role on the planet, the planet does you become extinct like literally if your only role if your role is to do certain things and you're not doing them then why why are we like why are you here so it's literally in scientific research that the male chromosome is reducing itself very slowly which means like um when when people are having children the the chances of the child coming out female is going up higher because that is literally re reducing itself. That's nature. 
If you're not doing what you're here to do, you're going to be taken away because you, there's no need. So, and a lot of people are saying, you know what? But you need sperm. You need sperm. You need sperm to produce children. Not necessarily. Um, it if you have DNA, if you have DNA, and the sperm is not what um, creates the separation in the um, the uh, multiplication of the cell of the egg. It's the vibration that the tail of the sperm creates. And since there's no vibration in the egg prior to the sperm, you know, infiltrating it, then it can't vibrate on a frequency to start, you know, multiplying. But we have technology now. We can create a frequency that can literally um, create the frequency to make the egg multiply without the sperm. We've had that technology for a long time. Just so y'all know. So, the only thing is like, like we still need y'all to build stuff, bring home our money, you know. But as technology increases, the men DNA starts decreasing. Have you noticed? But not the woman's. As technology increases, the amount of males born decreases. So we're not saying men and women aren't, you know, shouldn't be on the planet. We're just saying It has not affected the females. That's all I'm saying. So if you can make, like, let me tell you all a secret. If I can click online and get money in 10 minutes versus going to asking a man for some money, if I can get money online faster than I can get it from a man, what's in my mind? What's in my mouth? What's coming out of my mouth? What am I programming into the universe? What is what am I creating? Think about that. As I sip my tea. What what provide and protect two jobs or else? Oh my goodness. Goddess Why Red said it. If you can't do your job, technology will. Have y'all seen all those movies where, like, you know, technology takes over? Because they can do the work of the man? Uh -uh. It, eventually, if technology keeps increasing and whatever, whatever, there won't be a need for men on the planet. So if, I feel like this, there's a balance for everything. If you want to be needed, make yourself valuable. If, if women speak highly of you and what you're doing for them, your chances increase of sticking around. Because if you came out of a womb in the first place, if you came out of a womb in the first place, male or female, whoever birthed you, wherever, whoever had a higher mind, literally, than yours, that's your God. That's your goddess. So as a child who's in the womb, whose brain and heart and all the organs are developing, the higher mind or the higher self is your mother, is the female. Because she's growing your organs. She's thinking for you when you can't think for yourself, when you're still in the womb. She decides whether you make it to the earth or not. So 
if what's coming out of her womb is not successful, if it's not doing what it's supposed to do, if it's not creating like it's supposed to create or do what it's supposed to do, then her thoughts are, I hope I don't have a boy. I hope I don't have a child that's going to grow up to be this, 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 and that. So she's literally programming her mind to have a girl. She's literally saying, I don't want no scrubs. Scrub is God. I can't get no love from me. And she's saying, no, I'm not bringing other, I'm not bringing this into the planet because what's happening. This is how, like, how dare you go and talk like this to other women? How dare you not, you know, um, respect women or your mother? How dare you turn into this? Or how dare you turn to that? But then you have good examples of men who are good to their women and have a good foundation and have a good family value system. And then you have women hoping for boys. So it all depends on the number of women on this planet who want to birth men and who don't want to birth men. And by an, a huge number of women who don't want to birth men on this planet due to the way that they're treated is literally affecting how many men are being birthed. So when men try to use the, the, the statistics or there are more women than there are men, yes, that should, that should give you a wake-up call that y'all are becoming and reduced. Your frequency on the planet is being reduced lower and lower and lower and lower because you're not doing what you're supposed to. And plus the rise of technology is taking your place. So you have to redefine what it is to be a man. And that is through money. If we have technology and cranes and machines that can lift heavy stuff, if we have weapons and guns that we can protect ourselves with. If we can get online and make money by pushing a couple of buttons or whatever, then the man needs to be able to do that faster and more efficient than technology if, if that's what it is, you know? Um, the same butterfly signal, anything spiritual. Look it up. Why are y'all asking me? I'm not an encyclopedia. Celine, look it up. Just look it up. Because that's all I would have to do. I, literally, the question you asked me, I would just have to get my phone and look it up. So uh, the best way to learn is to look it up and see all the different meanings. Thank you. Thank you, Celine. Thank you, Norma. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Divine wellness, furious. Thank you. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Anyway. I gotta go in a few minutes. You said also there's a scientific reason behind that? Of course there is. Technology is one of them. You said men need empowerment rather than judgment, and we both come together in mutual respect. Okay. Um if men need empowerment, in my opinion, then you need to do the job that you were put here to do. That's how you get your power. And I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm saying it in the way, okay, think about this. Why are women so powerful? Because they are here to do like what? Birth people. They are here to create life and keep life going, right? We do that automatically. That's why we are powerful because we can attract and we can multiply. So that's our power, okay? That's our natural power. A man's power is his strength and his ability to provide. A seed is nothing without water. Okay. So what I'm saying is you got to do your role. You got to play your role. You can't look for, you can't look for empowerment if you're not doing anything to receive it. So for example, a lot of guys are, in their feelings and they're like, well, I don't want to pay on dates all the time. Well, I don't want to do this and I don't want to, but that's the reason you're here. If you're bigger, stronger, taller, more masculine, have a deeper voice, have more stamina than me, make more money on a whole than women in general, 
why do I got to reach down in my pocket? You know, it makes zero sense. So, yes, we're powerful. We're the reason that all humans exist because we gave birth. That's a lot of power. If all women decided that we're not having no more kids on this planet, that's very powerful. So, yeah, women are very powerful. We say what comes on this planet, what doesn't. So we are already doing what we're supposed to do. Raise, you know, and even if you don't have kids, you still have a nurturing spirit. You still have a nurturing way and caring way about you. You still have a way to create and manifest just because of your physical makeup. Okay. You still have the ability to give your eggs to another person that wants babies. You still have the ability. Even if you don't have eggs, you still have the ability to perhaps find a way to raise a child who didn't, who lost their mother. You still have a way to do a lot of things instinctually. Okay, so water and water magic is like literally one of the most feminine forms of magic because the symbol. And the, you know, the water is very, the symbol for water is an inverted triangle, which is the feminine symbol for the vagina. So definitely you're going to, if you're working on your femininity, definitely work with water magic, mermaid magic, siren magic, all those types of things. The goddesses, deities, and things like that are associated with water and learn about them. Okay. Um, you said the egg never chases the sperm. Exactly. You don't have to. So the whole silly, the whole silliness between men and women is literally um, silly because women rule everything. And men, if, if they don't want to um, create the, um, the safety and the provisions for the offspring, literally, then it's no longer needed. It's going to be an outdated program, as they would say in the matrix. It's an outdated program. It's going to literally reduce itself. So that's why I'm saying, if I can get money faster online, then I can ask for it from a man and he's willing to give it to me. Or if I feel more protected by technology than I do feel around a man, then my mind is creating this. Your mind, ladies, are creating this. And what is it telling everyone? So that's all I'm saying. It's like, if you really want to break it down scientifically, spiritually, um, technologically, that's what it is. So all I'm saying is, you know, women are, and men are on this planet and evolution and technology and all this kind of stuff is, is happening. Which, whatever way it goes is what we create by how we feel, by how we vibrate, and by how we, you know, respond to one another. And that's literally it. Okay. And then you have, like, you know, and <clears throat> you got to be very specific on who you procreate with. Because some of the genes really don't need to reproduce, if possible. Some of these, you know... <laughs> Some, some people don't really need to reproduce um, if you really think about it. So be very selective on who you lay down with, ma'am. Men too, you know, it goes both ways. Do I believe in reincarnation? I believe whatever I need to believe in when I need to believe in it. And that is how I will always believe. So for example, if believing in reincarnation is not um, something that I need to believe in at a specific time, then I won't believe it. But if it's something that's, you know, I should believe in at that time, or if it's something that is beneficial to me to believe in at that specific time, then I will. So it depends on if it's beneficial at that specific time or not, if I should believe in it or not. I don't just believe in anything because I'm supposed to or somebody said I should. I believe in it when it's beneficial to me. Okay. 
So when something is beneficial to you, that's when you use it. Okay. For example, let me give y'all an example. You have lots of different ingredients for food, right? You got healthy ingredients, you got spices, you know, herbs and all this kind of stuff. Now, as a trained chef, I can cook all types of food, right? What's popular right now? Hmm, what's everybody into eating? That's what I'm going to cook. Even though I can cook this better and that better, I need to make money. So what's beneficial for me right now? This is what I'm going to cook. Um, just like online, when people are selling stuff online or advertising online, what's popular right now? This is what I need to do. This is the song I need to put in the back of my reel in order for it to get views. That's what I'm going to do. Might not even like the song, but it's bringing in people. Is it beneficial? Yes. So it's the same thing with the belief system. Okay. Believe in it when it's beneficial. Don't believe in it when it's not. If you believe in it truly in your heart and that's how you truly feel, then that is your truth and your perspective. And at any time, it can change. So that's how I feel about any type of belief system. At any time, you can change it or use it for your benefit. That's literally it. Okay. So, you know, y'all play video games or whatever, or watch a lot of movies. If it's beneficial in a in a in a script or in a scene or in a video game, put it in there. If it's not, put it in a different game. Either way, it's gonna work. I hope you find the time to watch Dune because the women coven basically strategically procreate. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle Matrix. Yes, I haven't seen that. I need to go. Maybe I, I'll watch it. It, it kind of looked some, like something that I did, like wouldn't want to watch. But now that you say that, I might check it out. Mm -hmm. how, to differentiate, how to differentiate fact from fiction? fiction science. Fact is not truth. Truth is only perspective. Fact can be proven. Truth cannot be proven. Sprinkle, sprinkle, unless it's a fact. So, for example, if you believe something is truth and you can't prove it scientifically, it's not a fact. If you believe something is truth because you believe it and that's all that matter, and your mama believed it and your grandmama believed it, and you think it's true because it sounds good and it vibrates with your frequency, that is your truth. That is your perspective. But it's not a fact. That's the difference. So. That's how you that's how you differentiate fact versus fiction. Fact is something that can be scientifically few, uh, proved. Fiction is something that someone makes up. Truth is your perspective and how you live your life each day. I, that's why people say live my truth, because truth is not everyone's truth. It is a perspective. OK, so don't get it mixed up. How do you listen to your own voice and let other people define you? I don't know. Oh, stop letting other people define you? By not listening to them. If it's not if it's not beneficial to you, then why are you still listening to them? It's a waste of time to me. All right. Listen to yourself. Listen to those who speak, you know, knowledge that you find valuable. And take whatever knowledge you find valuable, apply it to your life. And then create what you want. But I don't listen to people that can't do anything for me. <laughs> That's a waste of my time. Okay. If you start thinking of things scientifically, think of like the Venn diagram where, th where there's the two circles that cross. All right. You got two circles, two people. Y'all are going to have similar ideas and y'all are going to have different ideas. Where your similar ideas are in the middle, that's where you have things in common. That's where you have common truth. Other stuff, no. Okay? And you don't have to agree with everything with everybody at the same time. You don't have to have the same beliefs as your parents. You don't have to have the same beliefs as your spouse. You don't have to believe the same thing as your best friend. You believe what you want, how you want, when you want, and apply it to your life. And if it's beneficial, great. You know, that's what it's supposed to be. People just believe in stuff because people told them to. And, it, and sometimes it's not even helpful to them. 
and it, and it messes up their life. And this is why we're talking about water, because it goes in the path of the least resistance and it's everywhere at the same time. It's powerful in all forms and we can use it to manifest, to speak. We can use it in our, um, you know, programming our water, programming ourselves because we have water within our body and getting the life that we want. Just stop believing everything someone told you to and start to believe what you want to. That's true freedom. I promise you. Say, so be like water and flow. Exactly. Even if you're a religious person and they, you know, they talk about walking on water and stuff like that. It's because you, you do what you want. Path of least resistance. I am who I am. I, I do what I want. I'm in a higher frequency. You know, I'm in a higher state of matter. I'm multidimensional. I have infinite options. That's how you need to think. How do you keep your calm when you get angry? Um, stop caring. <laughs> um, you got to think a lot, but if sometimes you're just going to get angry, um, definitely have a plan. So for example, before you get super angry, say, is this going to benefit me if I get angry or should I become more strategic and form a plan before I speak? This is why some people get quiet before they get angry and because they literally have to think about the best, you know, the best outcome of the situation. So if someone's mad at me or if I'm mad at someone, I'm not going to just scream at them unless, you know, they're in danger or something. But I'm not going to scream at them. I'm just going to I'm going to I'm going I'm to strategize in my mind. I'm going to think I'm like, OK, how can I get the most out of this situation and what I want? So you're literally transmuting that anger into into how to get what you want out of that person or get them to do. You don't just go off the handle all the time because now you're a victim of their actions and they can control you with their action instead of you observing the action, figuring out how to benefit from the, the action that has made you angry. Now you've transmuted that anger into something that's beneficial. That's what you have to do. This live is truly a blessing. Uh oh, Philly Sprinkle Sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Philly affiliated. <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta leave in about 10 minutes. So do I think there's a better after afterlife? You're going back to the source. Water. Does water think it's going back to the ocean, ma'am? Does this water in this does a raindrop? think it's ever going to go back to the ocean. What does a raindrop have to go through before it gets back to the ocean? Depends on which way the raindrop going, I guess, where it lands up. The temperature, the weather, it all depends. What is your afterlife? You know, when you speak what you want, you create it. So you create your own afterlife, man. Speak what you want it to be. Write it down. You can write plans for your waking life. Write plans for your afterlife. So get you a, a journal or a book and write down what you want your afterlife to be like. And speak it. Create it because everybody has a different version of what the afterlife is. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just, that's what they came up with. Okay. So you come up with yours. Girl, get this on Amazon. They have different colors too. You need this carafe? This type in water carafe. I keep this by my bed. I keep water and I drink it. It's really cute. They have different colors. I got clear because, you know, match my room. Get you some water, girl. Get you a carafe. Invest in yourself. They have real crystal ones that cost a little bit more, though. You want to be extra. <laughs> the most... You said we get angry because we assume the others know us when only we know us. That's true, Nui. 
we expect them to know what, what makes us mad, what makes us happy. And when they mess up, we're, uh, we're disappointed that they didn't know. Or they did know and they did it on purpose. So either way, you still should benefit from it. <laughs> okay. Just positive thinking. Put it on your shopping list. Yes. I've seen these in the store too, these water carafes. I've seen them in some store. I don't know. When did you start this manifesting journey since being a teenager? Girl, yes, I've been doing I've been teaching myself uh, or on a spiritual journey, teaching myself new things, learning new things, you know, taking what I like, leaving behind what I don't. Um, since I was like a young teenager, I would say I started reading about things like that in the fifth grade. So it just keeps going. And, you know, you learn more and you learn not to believe everything, but only what you choose to. And not permanently because your beliefs can change. How to get the energy to clean your room, girl. Well, I find that motivation paired with inspiration definitely helps you. So find a, like maybe a video on YouTube of like someone who organizes or cleans or find something on Pinterest that will motivate you to want to do something you know, a little bit different. Um, sometimes redecorating will definitely help you. So find some inspiration first and the energy will find you because you'll get excited. Your frequency will raise because you want to do something different or something new or something that you saw that was really, you know, nice and organized and you'll want to get more energy to get up and do it. How to get so delusional that the seemingly impossible starts to happen? Because at one point, everything was a, a delusion until it happened. So, for example, um, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, someone said, you know, you couldn't talk to someone across the world at the same time via, you know, like we're doing right now. People said that's delusional, but we're doing it because someone said, no, it's possible. Let me figure out how. Let me speak it. Let me write it. Let me do the research on it. So delusion is important because it's like an imagination. And in your mind's eye, you imagine things first before it's ever created materially. So you have to, you have to be delusional in order to create anything. Not a, a lot of times people will put a negative spin on what delusional is. It depends on what how you're using the word delusional. Are you using it in a positive way or a negative way? Are you delusional that some guy that you're in love with will finally love you back even though you're not his type? Y'all don't live in the same city. He's got a whole nother person, you know, financially invested. That's more of a delusion than saying I can be whatever I want. But still, even in that situation, circumstances can change to where eventually one day you might have a chance. If that person leaves that other person or if that other person leaves that person, if that person moves, you know, things will start to shift in the direction, but it may take a little bit longer. But still, if you started it in your mind and you're imagining it, it could happen. But by the time you get to the place where you can actually have that specific person, you might not even want them no more. And then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I finally got what I wanted, but now I don't even want it. It took so long. I don't feel the same way because things change and things keep moving. So that's why when you really want something, it should not be based on a person. It should be based on you. Something that you're always going to, you know, just, you know, want to create. That's why I say don't focus on other people. Focus on goals, focus on your lifestyle and what you're trying to create. I say that on my other channel. But if you put your focus on a person, let's say it may take 20 years for that dude to, to move to your state, dump whoever he's with, and all of a sudden become attracted to you. Well, what does that mean? It means did he lose his job? Did he lose, you know, did he lose his looks? Did he lose his money? Why is he attracted to you now when he never was in the first place? Something happened. 
So when we think delusion, we have to think of it in a way that serves us and benefits us the most for a long time. Not just some dude, not some person, not some woman. We got to be smarter. <clears throat> Let me tell y'all something. There are guys that you probably liked in high school and you go look at them now on their social media and you like, what was I thinking? <laughs> it's like that. So you don't want to base your, you know, delusions on a person. You want to base it on where you see yourself in 10 years from now, the lifestyle you're living, uh, how happy you are with whoever you're with. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's the delusion you want. How much money y'all got? Okay. <laughs> don't base it on a specific person because in order, like water travels the least path of the path of least resistance. So in order for you to get that man to like want you and like you after all them years of moving, he, he's going to be bald with a beer belly and on child support and need a place to stay by the time he get to you. That's that's what I'm talking about. The path of least resistance. <laughs> you don't want that, ma'am. See, it works both ways. So base it on the lifestyle that you want, not the person. All right, y'all got to go. But thank you all so much. Y'all are so sweet. Y'all sprinkle, sprinkle me. Um, donate it. I really appreciate you guys. Y'all asked really good questions today. I, I got to come live on here more. Y'all are y'all being so nice. I'm going to find the time this evening to answer the uh, messages on my spiritual Patreon. So um, definitely, or at least this weekend, because I, I am going out of town, but I will definitely try to do it tonight. If I don't, definitely tomorrow. And I thank y'all so much. If y'all are new subscribers, thank you. If y'all haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm definitely going to go live here more since I see more people here. And I do enjoy this channel because it does give me a chance to talk to y'all and teach y'all things that give my opinion on things and help y'all too. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.